for spending some time with me. And for those of you that were here last time, it's the same slides, so don't feel like it's going to be completely regurgitated. The idea is that we're going to role play most of this and yet I'll still go over things for people who were not here last time. Uh, first of all, how are we doing? Okay, that's halfway believable, that's great. So uh, I, I, I want to encourage participation today. Um, my, my standard role play person is going to be your fearless leader, Rebecca. That said, if you want us to repeat something, if like if we get to like an area where there would be objections and you don't hear one that you're getting and you want to talk about it, like this is totally interactive. Look at this as more of a workshop than a class. Um, and we're going to have a great time. And uh, yeah, don't fall asleep on me. We'll be good. All right, <laughs> this is my information. She said everything about me. Um, all of that is true. Uh, I'm an agent just like you. I'll probably always be an agent. I've like toyed back and forth with seventh level and it's just too weird to not sell houses. Um, and yet I don't sell most of them. My team sells most of them, um, which is super fun. And my heart is in coaching and teaching and training. That's, that's what fills my cup, which is why I'm here today. And which is why I'll be here in a couple of weeks as your bold coach. And we'll talk about that later when you all fall in love. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, there it is. Okay. So this, there's nothing really to role play here, and yet I'm still going to go over it. And if you were here last time, sorry, not sorry, because it's important stuff. Because, I mean, goodness, I'm a bold coach. If you've been to bold, we have to start with this before we do the actions, right? So why are we always, because I'm sure she does the same thing, and he does the same thing, and we're constantly barking at you to focus on listings, and you're probably over it at this point, and yet there is a method to the madness. First of all, you buy back your time, all right? There was a study like two and a half years ago that they followed realtors and from hello, nice to meet you to collecting your check, the time that it took you to close a buyer, you could have closed four listings. <laughs> okay, that was also two and a half years ago. Do we think it might be a worse conversion right now? Do we think that it might be like uh, eight buyers to one list or eight listings to one buyer? Okay. So they buy back your time, which for me with the 87 children and the multiple jobs and the remodeling of the house and all the things like it's important. And I would imagine you all have lives that you would like more time as well. And I'm in a room with the only person I know that has more kids than me. So, <laughs> oh, I remember. All right. So you have a higher probability of getting paid. Everybody likes that. Like, I'm sure we're all wonderfully philanthropic and all that. Yet I don't think you do real estate as charity. So you have a higher probability of getting paid. And even when your buyers sign a buyer broker agreement with you, does that mean you're getting paid? No, oh, because this market is crazy. Um, if you like working buyers, great. The buyers still come to you. So the whole message here is to what you focus on expands. So put your energy towards listings. It doesn't mean buyers are bad and you're not going to help them. That's not the point. The point is to put your effort towards getting listings because they'll bring you all the buyers you ever wanted and never needed and probably more than that. Um, you have the potential to work a smaller area. That would be if you were very intentional with your leads and with your farming and all of that. So we'll talk more about that later. And then here's just your reality check, which is now the second check for half the room. And yet you probably need it because we only retain about 10% of what we hear. That's a fact, by the way. Um, Stop saying there's no listings and that it's hard to get listings because the problem is, is that you're not getting them because you're saying that 
and then some other agent is getting all of them because last year was the highest sales we've had since 2006. And I don't know if you're aware of how the logistics of real estate work. If there's a buyer, there's a seller. So there's so many listings and I, it's painful at this point to hear agents talk about how it's just so hard and there's just no listings. No, there's just a lot of buyers. There's actually more listings than we've had since most of you have been in the business. So just remember to keep that in mind when you're having those days where you, you know, want to complain. It's not helping you. So nothing to role play there other than stop complaining. All right. <laughs> so now how do we get the leads? How do we find the listing opportunities? All right. So the first thing, and this is something that we can role play, is to do CMAs or equity analysis, whatever fun name you want to give them. It doesn't really matter to me for your database. Okay, because this is, this is why you're having trouble getting listings. You're not educating the people that you know, like, and trust and that know, like, and trust you. Because most of the people that you know are sitting on a gold mine and have no idea. They, they, know, there's, they know it's a crazy market. They know it's a seller's market. They don't do this for a living, so they don't know what that really means. They don't know what the value of their house is. And if you're not telling them, they're checking on Zillow. And if they like what they see on Zillow, they can click a little button and get more information or they can go to Open Door or any of these places. So we need to educate our people. So I think that's something that we can role play. So you're just somebody in my database, which is literally true. And yet, so here we go. So, you know, ring, ring. Hello. You know, hey, Rebecca, it's Hudson. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Hudson. How are you? I'm really, really good. Thanks for asking. Um, do you have just two minutes? I do. Great, great. Well, first of all, I just wanted to call and check on you. It's been a little while since we last spoke. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I'm busy, but yeah. Doing B busy is better than the alternative, right? Right. Wonderful. And how's work going? Work is crazy. Um, it's fun. Um, yeah, challenging long days. and But I love the people I'm in business with, so it doesn't seem like work every day. Oh, that's adorable, especially when you're sitting in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that's super great. I love that. And, uh, you know, you know, Rebecca, I consider myself your real estate uh, expert and resource. And so I'm sure you've heard how crazy the market is, correct? Yeah, I, I hear. Right, right. <laughs> and what I found is that people don't really know what that means. And this is probably your biggest investment, this home that you own, right? Oh, absolutely. Cool. So I just, I, I pulled a little information because I knew I was going to call you today. And I like to arm people with information. And so your house at 123 Main Street is actually worth $675,000 right now. Are you kidding me? Uh, no, I'm not. Like that's actually I, when I give numbers, I tend to be conservative. So that's like if you if you were to put it, and I don't I know you're not looking to sell. If you were to put it on the market today, I'm confident that that's how much you would get for it. Possibly a hair more. Wow, we just bought it a few years ago for four hundred thousand. Yeah, well, welcome to life in uh, real estate today. It's pretty crazy. So, how, how is the house working for you? That's great, but it's not that great. Where $250,000 doesn't sound fantastic. <laughs> well, seriously. Well, you know, I, the main point of today's call is just to arm you with that information. And if that, if that just excites you, great. I'm glad that you have it and that you know about it. And yet, if you'd like to find out more about what that would look like, whether it was you potentially selling and upsizing, downsizing, whether it was you pulling some money out and refinancing, Whatever it is, there's just a huge opportunity right now. So if you'd like to know more, I'd certainly be happy to meet with you. Absolutely. So um, I guess my concern would be um, if we did decide we want to sell and take advantage of it, is it hard to find houses? Uh, to be honest, it's super hard to find houses. Yeah. <laughs> well, because we're going to be honest with people, correct? It, it is super challenging to find a house right now, and yet we're doing it every single day. So let's say that we met and you really did get excited about the numbers and you wanted to look at upsizing or downsizing or just moving in general. Um, you know, one of the things that we can do in this market, I can't guarantee it in any upcoming markets, is that you really hold all of the cards as a seller. So, you know, if you're worried about where to go, then we'll just make sure that we have a little bit of a longer closing and then we'll negotiate a lease back for you so that you could stay in the house for another 30 to 60 days, which will allow us ample time to find a replacement for you. That sounds good. Let's talk. Okay, great. And so, so what I want to say to the room is that there's also, and they're different in every area. I promise you, you have something in this area because it's big enough that we'll do short-term housing. There are multiple apartment complexes that because of this market have converted part of their area to do short-term housing that isn't Airbnb and impossible to find. 
So that's another direction to go if you've got somebody who is truly, truly like they're going to be super picky or their price points impossible. There are ways because I'm going to take a wild guess. Is that one of your biggest objections with listings is where am I going to go? Okay. So, and yet, you know, because you're writing the offers for your buyers, you totally hold all the cards as the seller. Like we just, we just moved, my family just moved into this money pit that is making me crazy. And um, we, we got a free rent back. They didn't even like, they didn't even want money. Our best offer was like, literally you just stay for 60 days. And I was like, cool, that sounds great. So, you know, just don't be afraid. I mean, I think there's a fine line between making promises and telling people what's going on. I don't think you can promise that someone will give a rent back and they will promise to do it for zero dollars. And yet I'd say you could be pretty confident unless this house was abysmal that, um, that they'd be willing to get something like that. I, we, my entire team, like nobody said, we haven't left anyone homeless yet in the last 18 months. Like it's, it's really not that hard. So you gotta remember some of our job is just to reassure people. And obviously that's one conversation here, here's the key to this whole like equity thing or market analysis or whatever we would like to call it. It doesn't matter to me. When you give them the dollar amount, you have to stop talking. So her reaction was, wow, are you kidding me? Like, don't prejudge what your people are going to think or say. Some of them might just say, that's cool. Okay. And then you move on and you know that there's no interest and that's cool. Some of them are going to open the door with like, whoa, and then you get to poke a little bit. Some of them are going to tell you like, oh, uh, well, for that, I would sell tomorrow. And I promise you they will, because I'm watching it happen for other agents that are doing this. So don't be afraid to have these conversations. And this is regurgitation of last time I was here, and I'll say it again. If you really want to get listings and make money and keep it simple, just go do this. Like, stay for the rest of the class, because it'd be real weird if half of you got up and walked out right now. And yet, if there's only one thing that you're going to choose to implement, do this. You all, I don't care if you're brand new to the business, like, you know, people who own homes in your market area. You don't have to have sold it to them. Who cares? That agent isn't following up with them. You got a nine out of 10 chance. So there's no big deal for you to reach out and simply provide information. So, yes. You can tell me to wait, but is. I was actually going to say, what questions do you have about this? <laughs> so you're, you're on cue. <laughs> um, can we address the, that's great that I can get 675, but let's go with your, your situation and mine. But if I have to find another home that I can house a football team in, then I'm going to pay more than that, aren't I? Uh, I how am I going to, you know, whatever the situation is, it, if I sell this house, then that means that whatever I buy is going to be too much too. Well, because that's one we think. Like, yeah, well, you know what, and, and I, I can appreciate that. And yet, what's too much? Are we worried about price or are we worried about payment? Because, and I would say, I'm like half role playing, half talking to the room, like the <laughs> rates are getting weird and yet they're still historically really good. So a lot of people in your database, like these rates are still better. So there's a chance for a lot of people that they could upgrade and not really have that big of a hit and payment. Okay. So I think it's just poking holes and also like, let's be the expert where, the, where we are the expert. If that's what comes up and assuming that they would be financing with most of our clients are financing still, um, you know, then it's, you know what, if, if you're interested at all, like we're having this conversation, there's obviously some interest. So why don't you speak to my lender and let's just see what it would look like. And then once they talk to you, I can show you what you would be able to upgrade to and give you a general idea that, because I think that's part of, and like that one here, that's not another one where we're going to sit the appointment. Like we don't have to be a shark with everyone. Like if we're reaching out to people in our database and there's simple interest, like I don't believe that everything has to be a slam dunk listing appointment. Like let's just explore the idea. Like we're looking to create business. So I think also taking the pressure off, like, well, let's just explore this a little further in one step at a time. I think when you chunk it down and make it a little more simple for them, you'll also get further. Okay. And then you deal with them as you go. And to be honest, most people don't have families as large as ours because we're crazy. No, but yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> my eldest here. I was going to say, um, this is one of your kids right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's our oldest. And he was calling for us last week to some of our database. And I, assumedly, you know, 
single retired guy or, you know, whatever. And he kind of got irritable with David and said, well, I've got to live somewhere. If I sell this and get the money out of it, where am I supposed to go then? And, you know, that's not the first time that we've heard that, but it's always a... Well, we've got, to, we've got to get beyond that. So, so a really not in here at all. And yet an important thing for anybody who is in sales is you've got to learn to not be attached to the outcome or take it personal. Like, I totally understand, sir. Of course you need a place to live. And we can talk about that. The, the point today is, do you have an interest in having the conversation? I mean, that that's what we're like, because they do. And, and again, for every person like that, this is the other thing. Like, we, we can't get hung up on one or, I'm not saying you do. Like we can't get hung up on one or two experiences. Yeah. I mean, I cut my teeth on expires. Talk about rejection. <laughs> like, and yet if you called enough, you got paid. So my my thing is, is that there I'm, I'm watching it with my own database and my my agents. I'm watching it with people I coach and people I'm friends with because at this point, after 15 years, I only know realtors. And um, the people that are doing this at a high level are getting listings. And here's the funny thing. For the most part, the people that are like more than half of the time, the people who are listing because they were getting the value of their home are the same people that that realtor would have skipped if they were thinking about it. Oh, they've only been there two years. Oh, they told me they'll never move. The, the point is, is that money talks for people. And I know you've got people in your database that tell you the only way they're leaving their house is in a pine box, blah, 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 like they're never moving. And yet that's when they think their house is worth 500. And now you call and tell them it's actually worth 600. And they're their thinking is different. Yeah. Not everyone. And yet an awful lot of people there, there are plenty of people in for every person in this market that's got a ton of objections because of XYZ. There are people that see a lot of dollar signs and don't care. And we'll go find a rental or live with mom for a while. And like, are like, give me that money. That sounds real good. So, so the no idea is just solid, to educate. Yeah, there's no solid argument against that, but we just go through the ones that aren't worried about it. Well, no, not necessarily. Again, remember to ask questions. Okay, so I've got to live somewhere. Great, of course you do, and we can talk about that. If this would work, would you, if you could sell and cash out and still find a place to live and have it meet your financial needs, is that something you would be interested in? Okay. Just asking questions, and then you go down the road, and some of them aren't going to pan out, and yet at least you've got opportunity, right? So that's the idea, and it is, it's tough. I mean, it's tough when you get angry people, and yet, so is this someone in your database, or is this? We were so close that. So that's the other thing, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that's bad. I am saying that I would start with database people, because at least they won't be mean, and then, and then I would go, like, especially, gosh, if you have a farm, or you have a particular area you'd like to work in, or you have a particular area that's just ripe, like, think about, like, we moved to an area that's built in the, like, mid-80s to early 90s. We've got original owners that don't want to be in big houses anymore. So, you know, you could be strategic about it if you're going to circle prospect. And yet my, my general point here is to start with the people that you already know. It's lower. I'm all about going for low hanging fruit. And I have no shame in that. Like go for the easy stuff first. And then when you run out of easy stuff, go to the medium and then end at the hard. Like, like let's keep our lives a little simpler. So any other questions around this idea? And there are no bad questions. And you can't offend me, I dare you. Is there a good profile to focus on for the low, low hanging? Like you said, start with. So to me, low hanging. Okay, so here, if if I if, if if you were just like, tell me exactly what to do and I'm going to do it. I would start with my database and I would call anyone who owns a home. Okay. So like, even if they, because what I see, I have a friend in my market center right now that literally just listed, by the way, a $2 million property that her clients closed on at the end of last year. It was new construction, it took forever. And when they saw what they could get for it after they moved in for 10 minutes and decorated it, they were like, take it. So I would say, start with your database and anybody who owns a home. And when you're done with that, then I would say get strategic. And so I would say probably people who have been in their houses for more than three years, like three to, I would go maybe like three to seven years because they're not so rooted that they'll never move. And yet they built stupid equity, right? Like they built massive equity. And then if you run out of those people, then I would start looking for people who have been in their house like 20 years or more, who are probably at the point where kids have moved out. You know, look for people who are more than likely to either have a lot of equity or be ready for change. So that's what I would do. I would just truly, let's keep our lives easier and happier. Talk to the people that like you and won't yell at you first. 
and then you'll build up all sorts of confidence and you can talk to strangers that aren't so nice. So, and I would totally like, it wouldn't be horrible to door knock this too. And yeah, we'll talk about door knocking later. So, all right, so, th so that's the idea. Any other questions around this providing CMA for the people in your database? No, okay. Um, target marketing for your buyer. Who in here has a buyer that hasn't found a house yet? Oh God, or hasn't had an offer, hasn't had an offer accepted yet. That's everybody, okay. So that, I, I love, look, I'm a big fan of leverage. I've got the t-shirt on. I, if I can kill two birds with one stone, no actual birds were harmed, don't worry, then I wanna do that. So if I've got a buyer I need to find a house for, and I also want listings, why wouldn't I circle prospect to go find something for my buyer? And then this crazy thing happens if you've done this before. So you find a, somebody who's willing to sell to your buyer, and then the buyer sees the house and they're like, even though it was exactly what they wanted, I don't like this, I don't want this, I'm gonna do that. Well, now you have a listing opportunity, don't you? Yeah. Now you probably have some hurdles to get over because there's a reason it's not listed and they called you, and yet they just told you they want a list, they showed their card. So let's talk about that conversation. So let's assume that I've knocked on your door and yet you can stay sitting because we're not, there's no door here and that's just weird. So <laughs> no, no, you're cool. Let's just, let's not make it that weird. All right, so I knocked and you answered and I'm just gonna assume that you answered, you know, without like a cleaver in your hand or anything. So <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, hey, thank you so much for coming to the door. Uh, my name is Hudson, I'm with Keller Williams Realty. And I just had a question for you. If you just took one minute for me, I won't take much of your time. Would that be okay? Sure. Awesome. Hey, I have a buyer that's looking, I'm sure you've heard how crazy this market is. And I have a buyer looking in this neighborhood for a house like yours. So, so my question is simple. Is there any number that would consider you, to, that would have you consider selling your house? Even yeah, if it's crazy. Yeah, we, we've been talking about it. Yeah, just the idea of moving, you know, in this environment makes us a little nervous. So I guess it would have to be a really good number. Okay, and, and I can totally understand that. Um, so let me tell you, if you've even considered it at all, what I would love to do, if you're willing, is I would love to find a time where I could bring my buyer by, no pressure, you do not need to make this house perfect, this buyer can see through stuff, and just where we can come in and see it, and then if there's an interest, we could further that conversation, so no pressure at all. Would that work for you? Would we know what the number is before the buyer came, or? Uh, I mean, hard to know what until they've seen the house. I could probably give you a range. I, just, I would hate to give a specific number until they've seen it. I could just tell you for certain this is the neighborhood they want, and your house is one of the floor plans that they're looking for. Okay. So would, would that be worth your time? We're kind of like a 10 to 15 minute tops walkthrough, and then I will have them prepared with numbers once we get here in case they like it. Okay, but yet no attachment to the outcome. If it 100% no attachment. This is a no pressure. I don't need you. So like this, all I'm looking to do is bring my buyer through and then we'll talk. Okay, sure. Okay. So guys, people will say yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm telling you right now, Murphy's Law is real and your buyer probably won't want it. Um, and if they do want it, that's great because you're still getting paid. Now, you, of course, you have to negotiate. And are you going to get a full 6%? Maybe not. Doesn't matter. You're getting paid. Life is okay. Um, and she told me she wants to sell her house. She just has some concerns. So I would then bring the buyer back and I wouldn't literally do numbers there. And she won't remember that I said that. So don't get worried about that. I would bring the buyer and the buyer either likes it or they don't. I'm going to make sure the buyer's in a separate car because if they don't like it, I'm going to send them scooping because um, I want to have a conversation with her. And then it would be, you know, well, obviously if they liked it, then you're going to go into negotiation mode and you're going to keep your commission in mind because you do want to make sure that you get paid. Um, and yet if they didn't like it, then I'm going to say to Rebecca, you know, I, thank you so much for having us through and, um, it's, it's, it's not the right house for them, and it is a wonderful home. And I just, I wondered if you'd be interested in discussing this further. I, I know you have some concerns about selling, and yet you also told me that you have an interest in selling. So I, I wonder if I could answer a few questions for you. Yeah, really, I mean, if the, if the money makes sense, then I definitely would be willing to consider it. Okay, and, and so that sounds great. We'll talk about the money. Assuming the money made sense, where do you think you'd be going? Would you buy something else? Would you stay in the area? Would you rent? What, what do you think you would do? Oh, I'd probably downsize. Okay. Great, great, great. Smart time to do that. So um, I would love to talk with you about it. And then here, here's where you use your judgment. And I, there's no right or wrong. If you go in there prepared, I'm, I'm very high deep. 
So I would go into this like with a listing presentation in my pocket. Like I would have had the numbers done. I would know what it would sell for and I would have a general idea. And if she wants to keep talking, then I'm gonna sit down at the kitchen table. I'm gonna take it to her. I already saw the house. I don't need to take it to her. And I'm gonna go into a, a very non-pressuring because I don't want to freak her out. And yet I would go into a listing presentation and explain the numbers and then find out more about what downsizing is. Find out if she has any idea of budget. Has she talked to a lender? I mean, you'd be surprised, like for as many non-planners as there are out there, there's plenty of people out there who you might knock on their door and they've totally been planning this and yet they just haven't pulled the trigger yet. So she might know exactly what she qualifies for. Now, if the idea of doing that on the spot is like, mm -hmm. gives you like the, the shakes, you don't need to do it. You could also just set a time like, okay, well, great. I'd like to come back prepared and make sure that you're prepared. Um, when could I come back? Would tomorrow at four or Friday at five be better? And you, so th that's your decision, whether you want to go straight into the appointment. Again, I'm like, I walk through walls, so I'm going to go into the appointment. That's not your style. Then you, you set the appointment. Yet either way, anyone who tells you they would consider selling to your buyer is a listing. You just have to be willing to go for it. And where, and we'll talk about this for a minute, where I feel like most agents upon challenges is that we're not willing to close. We're not willing to ask for the appointment. We're not willing to ask the follow-up questions. We stop at yes or no. And that's, I mean, if you worked at Nordstrom's, you'd be fired. Like we, and yet you're making all this money selling real estate. So we gotta be willing to ask the questions and continue the conversations for you. So anyway, so, that, so does anybody have questions about that, about the idea? Yes, ma'am. What, what if you actually don't have it? Uh, a buyer when you knocked on the door and you said you have a buyer who's living in the in the area what if you actually don't have a physical buyer that you can bring back then you're a liar so don't do that just kidding <laughs> so um there's a different way to do that like so i feel like that's the next thing that, that's to me that's just straight up door knocking so you could totally pick a neighborhood and not have a buyer and do the same thing and just don't say you have a buyer because integrity is important right like hey you know what it would be a great thing to do around a listing so that's one way to do it. It would. So I'm going to go there first, and then I'll wing it. We'll come up with something generic. If you just don't have any of it. And yet, if I had a listing, and I first of all, if I had a listing right now, I'd just scream. It's so fun to get one. And you celebrate it. Now, are most of your listings still getting multiple offers? Cool. Mine too. It's really fascinating. So um, I feel like this is a this is one way where we should be leveraging the listings that we get. So you list one, two, three Main Street, and you have thirteen offers on it, and you can only sell it once, right? Mm -hmm. Am I missing this? Yeah, okay, you can only sell it once. Perfect. So <laughs> all right, so you've got it under contract and or closed. Don't care when you do it; doesn't matter to me. So okay, so again, I just sold one, two, three Main Street. And I knocked on your door and you answered, and you don't have a hatchet, so we're cool. Hey, you know what? Thank you so much for coming to the door. I appreciate it. And my name is Hudson. I'm with Keller Williams. I'm a realtor. Don't stay in the door. I'm a nice one. And I just wanted to let you know, and I would have in my hand, literally the other offers. Now I might black names out so I don't get in trouble, except I wouldn't do that because that seems like a lot of time. So, hey, I, I, just, I just sold the house at 123 Main Street right around the corner from you. And I don't know your situation. What I do know is that 12 of these people did not get the house and wanted it very badly. And 10 of them actually bid over our list price, which was already aggressive. And so I'm just curious if you've ever thought of selling, like even if it's just a crazy number, I would love to know because I've got 12 people that want a house right here in your neighborhood like yours. Yeah, I've never really thought about it. Um, I guess money talks. I look, it, it talks for most people. And what I'm finding is a lot of people right now who have that one crazy number they would sell for that they realize is crazy, so they don't even say it out loud. Sometimes that's a real number. So if you have any interest at all, I would love to know. Uh, I would love to know what that number is. Uh, probably 650. Okay. And, and so you would continue the information from there, right? Like you would, in this situation, I'm going to tell you right now, this is where you would set an appointment. Because you can't go door knock a neighborhood and have a CMA ready for every house. Like that's that that's way too much getting ready to get ready. So you would set an appointment so that you could go in and talk about it. And don't get so she says 650 and you do the comps and it's 575. She gave you a number. It doesn't mean it's her only number. So I would still set the appointment. Now, if she said no, there's there's no way we're moving, and she didn't slam the door on you and she's being a nice human, which most of them will be, by the way, it's much harder to be mean in person. Um, trust me. So 
then I would just say like, well, gosh, I totally understand that. It's a beautiful house in a beautiful neighborhood. I don't blame you. Do you know if any of your neighbors have thought of selling? It's a great time for them to cash in on their equity. And again, don't be, don't be tied to the outcome. They'll say yes, they'll say no. If you go knock on two doors and get no results and decide door knocking doesn't work, then that's not that door knocking doesn't work. That's that you got freaked out, which is understandable. It's, it's a lot to go knock on strangers' doors. And I mean, I, I know agents that door knock religiously and get a listing every time they go out because there's something magic that happens when you're face to face with someone. I mean, we just came out of the Zoom years, finally, and I know we're still Zooming a lot, and yet you could go to the same class twice, and do you have a better experience in person every time? So there's some magic when you're knocking on someone's door, and yet that's what I would do with, with I truly believe, with like not a lot of judgments, so don't take me at complete face value, that you're totally selling yourself short if you're not door knocking around every listing that you get that gets multiple offers because they don't know. They know it's a seller's market and they don't know what that means. They don't realize that things are going 75. I mean, my goodness, my mom just sold a house in Riverview for $50,000 over list. That's not normal. Nobody wants to live in Riverview, come on. <laughs> so like, it's, it's crazy. So are we educating them? So I would be doing that with it. Now, to go back to your question, let's say you didn't have a listing and you don't have a buyer. You can still go door knock, you know, hey, this is Hudson with Keller Williams. And I just wanted to let you know, I know you've heard the market's crazy. And yet here are some recent sales in your neighborhood. Are you really aware? Or you could just say like, hey, it's, I know you've heard it's a seller's market. And I've found that not everybody knows what that means. It's a name your price market. So is there any number? This is the question that you'll hear me keep going to. Is there any number that would make you consider moving? And you don't have to care about what the number is. I mean, the number might be a million dollars and it's like a trailer and you know it's not gonna happen. And that's fine. Don't go door knocking trailers. Anyway, it's like, no offense to you. Like, you know what I'm saying though? Like you could totally just go door to door and ask them, is there a number? I feel like that's an easy question. I feel like that's a disarming question because it's not just have you thought of selling and like, you're a stranger. This is like, hey, if you could write a check, how much would it be for? And it opens up the conversation. It allows you to set up a follow-up appointment, even if it was later that day that you just came back. I just think if you're going to go door, I think there's a difference between I'm going to call these 10 people from my sphere today. So I'm going to go take 20 or 30 minutes to pull a bunch of quick CMAs. Cause you're not putting like 30 minutes in each one. Don't do that. And to go door knocking, you're not going to pull everybody's information. You don't know who's going to be home. Um, and yet I totally think, I, I think if you're short on listings and you don't, you've already exhausted your sphere, Go find some place where they won't chase you out for door knocking and go find yourself a listing. They're out there. They're totally out there. So, um, so that would be door knocking. I mean, I can't, I don't really have a role play for farming. Um, go, go mail things, sponsor <laughs> events. Um, I will say again, this is my last apology for saying the same thing I said a month ago, because some people weren't here. Um, for, here, here's my farming 101. Pick an area where you can afford to mail to them every three weeks. You will out, you will out market every realtor in there. The, the people that live there won't know any different other than six, six, 12 months from now, you're the first name they'll think of and they won't know how. It's like a slow hypnotizing. So I, I would pick somewhere. I would rather you pick a small area and mail aggressively. And, and if you are able to plus that, I mean, if you could pair it with door knocking, if you could use a service and get phone numbers that aren't on the do not call list, don't go calling me when you get a $70,000 fine. Like you could call and introduce yourself. Is it a neighborhood that has events? Could you, we have Easter coming up. Can you sponsor an Easter egg hunt? Can you sponsor a Halloween parade? Like if you're going to farm, my best advice so that you don't feel like you're lighting your money on fire is pick, is pick a smaller area and just go, absolutely crazy on it like do all of the things and you'll gain your market share quickly rather than sending quarterly things and it's three years before you get your first listing and it's painful so that that would be that i don't have a role play for that so you're off the hook <laughs> um open houses people are interviewing sellers at open houses yes they're a great way to pick up buyers they're a great way to do justice to your seller because especially if, this, if there was ever a market where a random person might walk into a random house and buy it, it is this completely insane market. And so I do believe open houses are still relevant. And yet I think they're specifically relevant for, uh, for getting listings. So he, here's how I determine whether I'm dealing with a potential seller or a buyer. 
So you've come to the door and I'm, I'm going to walk up and I'm going to shake your hand and I'm going to greet you or I'm going to like maybe do like the trepidatious thing in case they don't want to shake hands because we're still in the COVID times. I'm going to greet them however they accept the greeting. You know, hey, thank you for coming in today. My name is Hudson. Are you one of the neighbors? Yes, I am. If they tell you they're one of the neighbors, they're a seller. There's a very slim chance that they're just looking to buy the house next door. Not no chance, just a slim chance. So if they're one of the neighbors, they're very likely a potential seller who's curious of values, curious about the neighbor's house and how they put it together for sale, curious about the agent and the job that they're doing. Um, now, of course, if they said, no, no, we're actually from out of the neighborhood, now you know that they're a buyer. I mean, it's pretty foolproof. And yet it's a lot, it's a lot less disarming than, are you a seller or a buyer? Like, that's weird. <laughs> Don't ask that question. So just ask them if they're one of the neighbors and they'll give you a great answer. Um, oh, well, great. That's awesome. Well, thank you for coming in today. Um, I'm going to let you look around a bit because here's also how you win in an open house. Don't be a stalker. Like, say hello, let them in and go let them check a couple of rooms out before you breathe down their neck. The, this is how you will turn people off super quick when you're all up on on an open house, like, oh, you're like don't do that. So you're, um, you're going to let her go. And then she's, depending on the size of the house, like, don't overthink this. Like, she went into one room, two rooms, 10 rooms, if it's one of these ones down by the water. And then you're going to kind of go that way and just check on her. Hey, I just, I just wanted to see if you had any questions so far. And she will or she won't. And if she does, you'll answer them. And then you'll kind of give her a little bit more breathing room. Because if you come in hotter, like who's ever held an open house and realized they got a bunch of fake contact information? Because <laughs> like right at the door, you were like, stop, sign. Like they're not going to give you real stuff often. It's creepy. So you're going to continue to check in with them here and there. And you're just going to start asking very easy questions. All right. Like if they were a buyer, you would ask, hey, how long have you been looking? Great. So they're a neighbor. Hey, you know what? Thanks for coming in today. Uh, how long have you lived in the neighborhood? And they tell you, great, you know, I'm, I'm looking to get the absolute best price for this seller, which of course will be great for you because you own property in here. What do you absolutely love about this neighborhood? And then let them answer. Just start asking them questions. And after you've asked them a few questions that have no, like, they don't feel like you want anything other than information, then I would ask, like, okay, so you're a neighbor and it doesn't seem like you probably want to buy the house next door to you or whatever it is, but what, what brings you in today other than curiosity? Let them tell you. Now, if you ask them for the first question, then they're going to keep their cards. Now, if you ask them a few questions that are easy and not really about them yet more open, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find a better outcome. And then I, okay, so again, so you, you so you're interested in selling. So, so what, what brings you in today? Um, I just, I really, I kind of wanted to see what their house looked like and the price and, and what they could potentially get in the market right now. Oh, totally. I, I can appreciate that. So, you know, as you can see, the house is listed at six fifty. Um, this is, we just listed it on Friday and it's Saturday for the record. We just listed it yesterday and we've had quite a few shows. We've got a couple of offers. So they're going to have multiple offers on this house. And we'll probably go over, excuse me, we'll probably go over this price. It's really great. Well, how, what do you think about that price? Um, I like that price if that was my price. Okay. Do you have a similar home? Do you have a smaller home, bigger home? We have an extra half bath other than theirs, but it's pretty nice. Okay, so it's pretty apples to apples, although we always like extra bathrooms here in Florida. So that's great. So wonderful. So have you are you considering selling or this was just more a curiosity killed the cat? You wanted to see what they were doing with their house. He's been toying with the idea. That's why I wanted to get over here and see what, what stuff is going for in the neighborhood. Um I think my husband would like this price. Okay. Well, you know what? If you have time, I'm gonna be done here at four o'clock. I'd love to stop by just for like 10 or 15 minutes. This won't be some full blown, I'm gonna whip contract out. Like, I'd love to just see your house in comparison to this and then I can get back with you with some more information. Would I be able to come by and see your house real quick? Sure, yeah, that would be kind of clean. Okay, great, and you know what? Seriously, don't worry about cleaning up for me. I've Whatever your house looks like, I've been in 10 times worse, so it's totally fine and I can see through all of that stuff. So don't, don't put any time. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. And then you're going to get a retrest and then you're going to go. They'll have you over. If they were willing to walk into your open house, nine times out of 10, they'll have you over. Now, I don't know if they're listing. I don't know if they're going to be realistic. I don't know if they've already got 10 other realtors and they just want to hear what you say. You, you, you can't control the outcome. You can make it. And so for, this is me for now, 
if you don't want to do it on the fly and you want to set a true listing appointment, that's totally up to you. I'm a fan of catching people off guard. <laughs> and honestly, I, I did the same thing with buyer. Like I, I built my business initially through open houses and because I like free stuff. And so I, I would always show a buyer a house after. Now I would not show them a million houses and they weren't getting in my car again or back when we put them in the car. Um, they weren't going to follow me anywhere again until we had a proper consult. And yet all day, every day, if I'm doing an open house and it's going to take me an extra 30 minutes to an hour to go show them a house and show that I'm willing to do something for them to gain their trust, I would do it. So I would do the same thing for a seller. I'll come over after. And honestly, in my, I don't do open houses anymore. I don't think I ever will again, because I think I've probably done like a thousand of them. That's a lot. Um, I've taken a lot of listings that way. And again, it's, and you will also see a common theme with me, which doesn't mean it's right. It's just how I do things. I'm no pressure. I'm no pressure in the appointment. If they have objections, I will do my best to address them. And we're going to do some of that in a little bit. And yet I'm not here to say sign here, press hard. That's not how I work because that's not how I like people to deal with me. So you don't have to pressure people. And you'd be surprised when you just ask easy questions that you get easy answers that help you out. So, so when it comes to open houses in that conversation, or open houses in general, are there any questions while we're here? That's a no. Got it. Okay. Your vendor partners. Who in here gives business regularly to another business person? Oh, cool. It's, it's all of you. I know some of you just aren't going to raise your hands no matter what, and that's fine. I do know who you are, though. Um, why aren't we asking them to do the same? Like, if you have a lender that you gave 10 deals to last year and you didn't even get a lead, that's not a win-win relationship. And even if the lender's great, and nine times out of 10, just like the rest of your sphere, it's not that they're not willing, they just don't know, or they don't think of you. So are we utilizing our vendor partners? And I will keep the conversation in the vein of getting listings because really you make it easier on them. And look, this is not just lenders. This is title people. This is the painter you send business to. This is uh, your insurance person. This is your home inspector. Like this is, and I've always been, is the broker of this office in here? Yeah, I'm safe, cool. Um, I know we're supposed <laughs> to give three options. I don't do that unless they ask me because I've done this long enough and I know who's gonna do a good job. And I don't say you have to use these people. I say, this is the lender that I trust. This is the, like, I'm very loyal when I have a good relationship with somebody. So, and I'm sure a lot of you are like that. Just don't tell your broker, it's cool. All right, so, <laughs> all right. So this would be a phone call and you're calling whoever, insert vendor, it doesn't matter. You can be a lender today. You're, you're Rebecca, Rebecca Morgan, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I called you, you answered. You know, hey, Rebecca, it's Hudson over at Keller Williams. How are you? I'm doing great, Hudson. How are you? I'm doing super good. Thanks for asking. I know you're so busy, so thank you for taking my call. And, and I'm calling, first of all, just to say, I, I was kind of looking at last year's business, and, um, and I saw that you actually closed 12 deals uh, for my clients. And I wanted to thank you. Every one of them were happy, and you did a fantastic job. So thank you for doing that. And yet I'm also reviewing my own sources of business and you know, referrals are everything to me like they are for you. And, and I noticed that we didn't get any referrals from you last year. And, um, and no judgment, because the truth is I wasn't asking. And, and I, know, I know better, I know that I need to ask. So I, I'd just like to ask if within the next six months or so, because I don't need you to go off pound the pavement, like within the next six months, do you feel that you could give me at least one referral? I think I can do that. Okay, that would be great. And um, and to make it even easier, I've really got to focus now. We'll still have buyers and I'm going to send them your way. And you know, we really have a focus on listings this year. So if you got a buyer referral, I'm sure other producers ask, like you can give that to somebody else. I would love to get, I would love if your next listing referral if you thought of me and sent it my way. So would that be fair? Absolutely. Cool. And my friends, if the answer is no, then I think you have to evaluate that relationship. And I think it's okay to say, especially if you're dealing with a business person, now you might catch them by surprise, yet good for you. You know, so she said no. Well, you know what, Rebecca, I, it's a little concerning to me and I'm not sure why. So I just, 
I really need you to give me a referral within the next six months or I'm going to have to find somebody else to partner with. And there's no hard feelings. You're amazing. I just, I, I need win-win relationships in my life. And they'll either act or they won't. And if they don't, they're telling you exactly what you're going to get, which is nothing. And even if your lender or your title person or your painter is amazing, I promise there's someone else who's amazing and we'll give you one. And it's so funny because I just did this class up in the Siesta Key Market Center on Clark. And randomly that day, I really don't know why he was there. And it was the perfect plant. Um, there was a real estate photographer in the class. And I'm talking about this and I will say to you what I said to the group. I'm like, who here doesn't ask for referrals from their vendor partners because they just assume that they get bombarded with requests? Okay, so apparently this room doesn't do that at all. That room, it was most, yeah, it was most of the room. Most of the room was like, yeah, I mean, I feel bad. Like everybody's asking. And that guy stood up so quick. He's like, I haven't had a realtor ask for a referral in two and a half years. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is 99% of, of any business owner. We're awful about doing it. Like we have this belief that as long as they give us good service, that's enough. And that is a lot. Like you need to be partnered with somebody who will give you good service. And yet they should be willing. And again, I'm not telling you to be so aggressive that they've got to give you every lead ever. Like that's a lot. You better be producing like a thousand units a year. And yet to ask for one or two a year, they live in real estate. Like they go, yes. Same thing. I've, I ask our vendors and they typically say, you know, you're the only one that Exactly. I mean, I mean, can you say it? Anytime in front of anybody, I'm always asking. So. Well, this is funny. So there was, I just graduated of old in Orlando, and one of the agents in the class was, sure, none of you fit into this category. Maybe you have friends. Um, she was totally there just to appease her team leader. Like, she already knew it all. She was a mega agent. She's very nice. Like, she just, it was very like, yeah, I know, whatever. Like, the whole time. And there was, I forget what step it was, but there's a step where, we go over um, relationships or not. We talk about vendors and we talk about, uh, you know, two-way relationships. And so she decided she would do what I asked, which was to have this conversation. Also, like, her D was off the chart. So she called her financial advisor and she was a luxury agent. So she, she had sent a lot of clients to this person, even though it's not directly related to real estate. And she called and she's like, yeah, you know, I've sent you however many clients and you haven't sent me anything and you need to send me a referral or I got to find somebody else. I mean, that was how she was. She, there was no food. And so her guy kind of, she, the way she described it, he kind of like chuckled and I think they had a pretty good relationship. So he wasn't completely turned off. He was probably more impressed. And he's like, you know, I don't really have anybody right now that I can think of. I'll get you someone. In the meantime, I have this builder I've been working with quite a bit. Why don't you call him and just introduce yourself? I, I I don't know anything. I just, he's in real estate too. He's a builder. 36 unit luxury complex. She's the listing agent from one call. The average price was like 950 on the home. So are we asking? Are we willing to ask? Yes. How would you respond to somebody that says, uh, I deal with so many agents, I'm not comfortable with anyone in particular? Yeah. That's, right. That's a very common answer. Mm -hmm. Great. You know what? I can totally understand how you'd feel that way. And unfortunately, I, I need to partner with people who see it differently. So I've appreciated our time together. I'm, I'm dead serious. You're, you're, you're running a business and you can't give away your business without expecting something in return. Well, and I thought you were reasonable. Yeah. You said one in six months. In the next six months. That yeah. Wasn't that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying, like, let's not be crazy. Like, you better give me a referral now. So I'm going to drive to your office and we're going to have, work. no, like, just, and again, own it. If you haven't asked for referrals, it's just like, I see, every time I see a realtor on Facebook complain that their cousin or friend or parent listed without them, I'm like, you probably never asked. That's your fault. So, you know, and that's, I would own it. I would be like, hey, like, no hard feelings. I've never asked. That's why I want to say, like, I'll give you six months. Like, could you find me someone? Or could you do not need to find it? They'll it'll come to them. And I would if they're telling you right now that they wouldn't refer to you, like why would you continue to refer to them? I mean, that's, that's crazy. Amazing. Yes. Could you potentially say if in that I'll circumstance, um, and I'm sorry, Casey, no. but could you potentially say, you know what, I understand, I understand that. So are you saying that you are willing to risk your family and friends with strangers rather than people that you already connect with? And I won't tell anybody I came from you. 
You know what I mean? Well, that's probably a smarter direction to go. And that was my D coming out. And yet, either way, though, if you so ask questions, she's smarter than me, ask questions. And yet, if the end result is still that they're not going to be willing to refer you, I'm sorry. It's time to go find a new whatever business they do. That, that's my opinion. Now, if you love them so much and you decide to fall on the sword, that's, I'm not telling you you're wrong. I just, I like two-way relationships. I like a win-win in all things. So it's back on the, I have to, it's right there. <laughs> so, all right. Any other questions around that? Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry. That's so, um, so I've gotten to the point where I'm afraid to ask that question because when I have asked that question is, um, we don't do that. And, or they don't, you know, I don't actually get leads like that. And I know in at least a couple of situations that that's not exactly the case, but that they have other relationships. You're asking for like, one piece of business. So here's my thing though. Let's just say that this one vendor has a much more advantageous route to send their real estate leads to than me, but they're really good at what they do. If I move to someone else who does that job, A, let's be honest, they have a thousand other realtors that have been working with them longer than I have. And who are, you know, who I'm sure that they have better, more rooted relationships with. And B, I'm taking a chance that they're not as good. So how do I move to someone new without it being the same person that everyone else uses? Uh, but if everyone else, you just had example. Not everybody is asking them for referrals, I okay. promise. And the person that says, we don't do that, okay, great. My response would be, well, would you be willing to do that to keep this relationship going? I'm asking for one deal, not a hundred. And if they say that they don't get leads like that, unless you're working with a robot, then my response would be, I understand that you might not have a lead flow coming in, and yet do you know people on earth? <laughs> Where do you think we get our business from? Like, it's like... And I would say, like, okay, so I'm, I'm saying, like, your neighbor, your cousin, your friend, would you be, if, when you find there's an opportunity, but would you be willing to share one with me? Because I think sometimes you might need to just clarify, because maybe they think that you're going to give them some lead gen tool, and you're going to send them 10 things a month. That's not what you're asking for. Like, you're a human in the world who's also in real estate. There's a very high probability that you'll find a lead, and I'm asking you for, and again, it doesn't need to be that it closes. Like, you can't control that part. Like, I'm asking for you to give me an opportunity. And moving to someone new, you do your homework. You find, and look, nothing's going to be perfect. If you find a new lender and they don't do a good job on the first time, then you don't find another one. That's There's the plenty I'm of good people that, out there. that I go to someplace else and then that person, I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I even try? You know. Whatever. Okay, so I'm really hoping you're going to both. Like, because <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just, it's yeah. with respect. And we sat class together, but like, it's silly. Like, why are you like, I know. You're sometimes right. you're going to make a mistake. Yeah, you're right. And I don't mean like your thought is silly. I mean, the, the fear itself, like, don't yeah. worry about that. Like you go to somebody, you have 8 million people in here. You could get people to vouch for, like you could find somebody good. And if you have one bad deal, then like, it's going to happen anyways. Like we all have off days. So you're better off to go find business. That's all I'm saying. Find someone who's going to help you. Yes. I was thinking if you, if you just love this lender that much, or just like with your own customers, if you just keep asking, and you're the one that's constantly asking. You're gonna, you're gonna beat everybody out. You're gonna keep asking if you. I mean, if you're like, I can't divorce this person. I've got to stay with them. Then keep asking and be consistent, and then just keep asking them. You know, I keep asking you, and you just don't deliver. Eventually, you do have to give up. But oh yeah, I, I just. Well, that's a good point, and and to like plus that point is that you have all sorts of companies that you give business to and business owners like. You might have one or two that are so amazing that you're not going to dump them even if they say no. That's fine. There's no judgment in that. What about the other 30 people that you refer to that you aren't completely in love with? Like, yeah, that's so that's that's something I would think about. You're, yes. We'll just keep going. Just go. um, so being a new agent in the area, and I just had an appointment yesterday just to talk with um, the lender who was lady who helped me get my condo taken care of. Cool. And I reached out to her because it was a really smooth process and I wanted to reach out and meet her team to try to build a relationship. Okay. Um, any key phraseology to say, you know, how to launch a relationship, you know, like learning about them when I go to their office, but also like any nice phraseology of saying, you know, keep me in mind if you have referrals, 
I wouldn't say keep me in mind. I would say I'm looking for a lender to partner with, and it was so great working with you. I believe in win-win relationships. I'm going to give you anybody I find. Could you find one referral for me in the next six months? It's sick. It doesn't matter that you're new here. Who cares? 90% of realtors are new at any given time. Like, who cares? You at least came with experience. So, like, I, I, I would not treat it like that. I would just say, hey, I, you, she knows you're new. So, you can say, I'm looking for the lender that I'm going to partner with and send all my leads to. So, I'd like for that to be you. And I just, I, I'm looking for a two way street. So, could you give me one or two leads a year? Would you be able to commit to that? And she'll probably say yes. And if she says no, same deal. You have the decision whether I, she was so great. Nope, I'm a fool, or I'm new anyways. Maybe I should talk to some other lenders. And again, we're talking about getting like. Let's also be real. Like we're talking about getting one or two extra deals a year. This is not what will make your career. And yet, if you do that with everybody that you give business to, now you're really onto something. So it's more of creating the habit. All right. I love all the interaction. Thank you. There's nothing worse than a room that's dead behind the eyes, and that's not you. All right. So then fist was and expired. Expires is easy. I, I, I personally don't know that I would be calling new expires right now because there's only like two or three a day. And if they expired this market, woo, plus there's like 30,000 agents calling them because you still got the diehards that focus on it. Like, so, I, so if you're going to go after expires, we're talk, we need to go way back. And, and this, I, I would, the truth is, I would really only recommend this if you are either newer or near the area or you're in a slump, maybe that's not a great word. You know what I mean though? Like, because this is gonna get time consuming because you've got to go way back to find the expired listings and then you've got to find the ones that haven't sold and most of them sold. And yet when you find someone who was for sale two, three, four years ago and you're able to call and tell them, hey, that price you couldn't get that you're probably really upset about, we can double it now. Maybe it's not double, you know what I mean? Like when you can tell them what it's really worth, like that's a conversation that they will have with you all day long. And so it would simply be, I, I, you know, you'd have to find the phone number or go knock on the door and just, you know, hey, this is Hudson with Keller Williams. And, and I saw that your house was on the market. I know it was years ago. So I'm sure this is a strange call. And yet I was just curious, do you have any interest in selling still? And let them answer. And if they say no and they hang up on you, then who cares? You move to the next person. And if they say yes, or maybe, or I don't know, then you say like, well, hey, I, you know, I know your house was on the market for $600,000, you know, back in 2019. And I... I just want you to know that not only could you get that now, it's probably worth close to 750. Would there be a reason for us to sit down and talk about that? And just get yourself an appointment. Like to me, that's easy. It's just, there's a lot of groundwork to it where I think everybody could have some success would be with FISBOs. In this market, is it easier for a FISBO than before to get their house under contract? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are they getting the same price they would get if they were on the open market. Oh my God. Nine times out of 10, they are not. Is it always closing? Do they have anybody advocating and explaining to them about all of the different ways they can get in trouble? No. no. So I would be calling for sale by owners. You're for sale by owner. So you answer, hey, you know, thanks for taking my call. My name is Hudson and I'm with Keller Williams. And I saw that you have your home for sale at 123 Main Street. And, and I was just curious how that's going for you. They'll talk, they'll tell you great. They'll say, in fact, they'll probably always tell you great, even if nobody has come by because they're proud and that's why it's a FISBO. So, okay, I'm, I'm so glad it's going well. And, you know, I was just curious. I, this market's amazing. And one of the things that I've been doing for people like you who don't really want to be tied to an agent, and yet you probably don't want a lot of hassle in your life either. Do, do you know all there is entailed with selling a house? Well, we've sold many houses over the years. Like, okay. Yeah, um, back in the 80s. Okay, great. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I mean, the, rate, the rates were crazy. So the truth is that's a, that's a pretty solid feat that you were able to do that back in the 80s. And yet... It's a really interesting market right now. And while there's top dollar to be had, which is going to be great for you when you get it sold, uh, Rebecca, the buyers are very scrutinous. And so what we're seeing is there's way more lawsuits than before. There's way more cancellations of contract than before. And, and I, I feel that now more than ever, it's actually important to have an intelligent and educated realtor in your corner so that you don't get yourself into trouble. And with that in mind, what I'd like to offer to speak with you about, if you'd like to know more, is that 
I would love to offer you a three day listing agreement. Yeah, well, you know, we. We really wanted to save on the commissions, but if you have a buyer, we'll pay the commission. Totally get that, and I may have a buyer. And let me ask you: Is the commission really what's important to you? And it may be, or are you more concerned with that bottom line net that you're going to receive? Oh, the bottom line. Okay, because what we found, and actually, there was a for sale by owner that just sold not long ago in your neighborhood, so they were successful, um, and it closed for four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, and. Um, there was a realtor that listed the same exact floor plan about a week later, and that one closed at 525. So sometimes as a for sale by owner, you might save on the commission to lose on the net. And so what I'm speaking about offering to you is I now I would need your commitment, and I need probably about a week to get professional photography done. You won't owe me a penny for that. That's on me. And yet I'm asking for three days on the open market. And if I don't bring you a wow offer that just absolutely knocks you off your socks, then you can have the listing right back and go straight back to for sale by owner. Would that be something you'd be interested in speaking about? Yes. Okay. So if you're sitting there with that little voice in your head that goes, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Are most of your homes selling in a matter of hours, if not days? Yeah. Okay. Especially if they're marketed correctly and priced correctly. If I, I spend most of my time teaching and coaching, if I was still truly full-time selling, this is what I would be doing because I don't like talking to people for a long time. So these are quick relationships. Like <laughs> I would be doing this left and right because what is the harm? If you went and listed 10 for sale by owners on three-day listings, would you sell at least eight of them in this market? I think you would. So, okay, so maybe there's one or two of them that don't sell and you're out a few hundred dollars each. How much money did you just make though? Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's, I mean, look, it's tax time. Y'all know, like it's a write-off. Okay, so you took pictures of someone's house. Okay, they're now yours. You can use them for marketing. You get to write off the mount. I'm telling you right now, I would be doing this left and right and I don't think people are doing it. Now, if three days gives you like heartburn, okay, you could offer three. All I'm saying is, I think the days of going and asking for a six month listing for a for sale by owner, I feel like for the most part, you'll be laughed out the door. This is the way to get their attention. And even if it doesn't sell in the three days and yet you've done an amazing job and there's interest, is there a chance they might extend it a while for you? So that's the conversation around for sale by owners. So with any for sale by owners and expires, do any, do any of you have any questions? How far back is we back for the expires? Um, I would probably look depending on how much time you have in your hands and how big of an area, like anywhere from like, I'd go back at least two years because the last two years have been crazy. So I would go back at least two years and three, four, five. I mean, like as far back as you have to go, I mean, not like 10, like at a certain point, I would just go back to before the world went crazy and houses weren't flying off the shelves. That's what I would do. So there's no right answer. I just, I would go at least two years back because if they didn't sell a year ago, chances are they sold, like they relisted and sold they're very high, or I mean, they were literally like they wanted a million dollars for a hundred thousand dollar condo in the middle of nowhere. So, okay, so, I, that, so then um, you said once they have a resale, so they have the public records. I guess if they didn't, if they did it by owner and not um, listed as this agent, is where I'm saying this is going to get tedious. You either because let's be real, even if you pay for a third party service, a lot of times they don't catch which one sold and didn't. Because I used to do this. So this would be you picking probably a target area so you don't go mad. And yeah, you're going to type the address into the MLS and see if it's sold later. If you don't see anything, you probably do want to check on public record because they might have had an off-market sale. So again, I'm telling the, the expired side of this, I would, this is if you have time on your hands. If you don't have time on your hands, FISBOs are quicker. quicker. If you don't have time on your hands, door knocking is quicker. CMAs to your sphere is quicker. So this is kind of just one little thing, and yet I don't think it applies to most of the room. So, yeah. But yeah, at least two years. That's what I would say. All right. And yes. Um, so I'm a new learner too. Congratulations. Thanks. And I have no problem with tool calling people because I actually just started. Um, but Good. a lot of the for sale by owners, I feel like, basically are like, there's like 30 people ahead of you that will take less commission. We haven't even talked about commission though. This is our 30 of them saying, I'll give you a three day listing. Tell me that he had people in mind that he looked to 
to sell his properties. <laughs> and I and I'm thinking, well, if they're if they can't negotiate the commission with you, why would you want them to negotiate the property? But is that rude to say to somebody? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this is the whole point. You have to get like, them thinking. Yeah, like if I can't like okay, so you've got all these realtors that would do it for less, and yet you haven't listed with them. So it seems like maybe you haven't met the right realtor yet. We should talk. And, and some of them aren't going to convert too. Like it's okay. Like you're not going to convert everybody you talk to. Yeah. And yet, okay, great. You have all these people that want to sell it for cheaper. You know, there's a reason people will go pay for a Lexus and not the Toyota when it's the same car. So I would still love to meet with you. And there's no pressure. And you know, when it comes to commission, it's negotiable. They could pay seven or eight if they would prefer. Like it's totally fine. <laughs> Just tell them it's negotiable. That the key, and we'll get to objections in a little bit. Like. Okay. The key to objections is to not address them until you have an appointment because you will not get the appointment once you address them. No, no, it's the worst. It's the worst. And it's what most of us do in fairness. And I myself included, I've done it a million times. Like you've got to get around it. So anything else before we move on? All right. Um, all right. So you've got a lead. Now you got to get the appointment, which is where, no offense, I think a lot of us struggle is actually getting the appointment. I mean, we all just said how nervous we were to ask our vendor for a referral. Like we, closing does not come naturally always. So first of all, you just got to get the habit of asking for it, which I know sounds like really rudimentary and like I'm being a smart aleck. And no, like we have to ask. I listen to agents on the phone and I listen to them not ask for the appointment. Well, well, let me know if you want to be, that's not asking for an appointment. That's telling them you're not hungry or professional. So we've got to ask for the appointment. We've got to make sure that we ask for it more than once. And that doesn't mean when they say no, you say, well, what about now? Like it means that you ask some questions and continue the conversation and then ask again and maybe ask in a different manner. And we'll go through that. Um, you've got to be careful how much information you give, whether it's in person, on the phone, whatever, when you're meeting with someone and your intention is to get an appointment. If you give, you got to give them some so that they have a reason to meet with you. And you have to not give them everything so that they're like, well, you just told me everything I need to know if you get it. I mean, I'm looking for people to replace my roof right now, which that's horrible. And this one guy like just texted me numbers for a quote. That was it. Nothing on paper. He didn't talk to me. I was like, goodbye. Like, I don't need to, like, that's, ugly. you're not the cheapest and you also weren't professional. We're not talking any further. Like, you have to be careful with what you do. Um, and we've talked multiple times about taking the pressure off. Like, and even when we get into pre-qualifying the appointment, not here to tell you that if they're not ready to list within the next seven days, you don't go on the appointment. I, my intent is just that you know what you're getting into when you get into it. That is the purpose of requalifying. Um, and then have a value proposition. There's 8 million realtors within a mile of this office. Why are they meeting with you? And you have a reason. And most of you are probably living and teaching your value proposition. Are you really communicating it though? Do you know how to communicate? Are, are we getting stuck in it? I feel like value proposition goes hand in hand with big why. We get lost that it needs to be grand and it doesn't. Uh, you know what, Mr. Seller, here's the thing that you're gonna get with me. No one will be more honest with you. In fact, some of the things I might share with you might offend you and I'd rather risk that than risk my integrity. So I will always be honest with you every step of the way. That's always been my value proposition. Like, I don't care if you don't like what I have to say, I'm telling you the truth. If somebody says your house is disgusting, I'm not filtering the feedback. You need to hear it. And I don't want to be the bad guy anyway, so let somebody else say it. All right? <laughs> so so let's go through. So, okay, so we're, I, I called you, let's, what is it going to be? Let's do CMA. So it's, so we've talked, oh, no. Let's do CMA, and yet you're not in my database. It was like, you're, I'm, I'm circle prospecting or something like that, or I'm farming the neighborhood. So, so I've told you your price. Or, or I, I've told you the price that your house is worth right now. And I've asked if you've had any interest in selling. So, all right. So you know that the house is, um, I'm starting in the middle. So your house would be worth about 675 in this market. What do you think about that? I think that's a good equity, something to consider. That's awesome. Well, so when you say something to consider, um, what does that look like for you? Is that, does that mean it's just interesting to know? Does that mean you think about selling or refinancing? Like, what does that mean to you? Um, well, potentially selling, yeah, I'm not sure where we would go. 
because I know it's such a crazy market. So. Totally, I, I, I can understand that. And yet that would be a really good reason for us to meet and discuss your options. So I could come over tomorrow at four or Thursday at three, which one of those would be better? Well, my cousin's brother's uncle's sister is a manager, <laughs> and I would feel like you know maybe we need to give give them the chance to talk about it. Well, and that's totally fair, and I would encourage you to interview more than one real estate agent. That that's no problem to me, and yet I'd still love to come and share what I know about the market and what I would be able to do for you, and and really more than anything. I'd like to find out what's important to you so I can best serve you. So would tomorrow at three or Thursday at four be better for that? Um, Thursday at four. Okay. Do you want me to object more? You're being super easy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't know, you know, think about it because I'm, I'm, we're certainly not committed. It's just, you know, an idea. No, so. and I get that. And, and a part of where I see my job is to actually help people gather information so that they can think about it and make an educated decision. So I'll tell you what, this is this appointment will not be me leading with a stack of paper and asking for you to sign it. This appointment is simply for you to gather information and for us to share it with each other, and then we can go from there. So I would still love to come meet you. So would there be a time tomorrow that would work or are the weekends better for you? Um, well, if you want my husband there, I would like to be again. I would definitely want your husband there, just so that you guys are both on the same page with everything. Um, so what about Saturday at 3? Um, do I have to get rid of my 12 cats and 3 dogs? <laughs> um, I, I, personally, I live in a zoo anyway, so no, you're totally cool. You don't need to get rid of anyone for me. It will be all good. I just want to relax. <laughs> okay, yep, that works. Great. You just have to, and look, this is... Role plays are never real because she's not really going to sell her house with me. Maybe she is. I don't know. Um, you have to continue to add. The point is that you continue to ask questions and then you ask again. Look, they give you an objection or a condition or whatever it is. You address it. You ask again. Like, this is literally how you will go get more appointments. And if you get more appointments, you will get more paychecks. And I'm a big fan of paychecks. I have six kids. Um, so there's that. And so when I say ask five times i truly to me and there's lots of studies done there's books about it like five times is about where you're either going to win or you're really going to lose and they're just done and you better stop talking so i wouldn't be afraid to ask asking once is not enough well maybe it will be and yet if they say no it's not enough asking twice is not enough i would go for as many as you can and if you get weird at three and that's where you stop that's okay Next time you have the opportunity, can you push yourself to four? You know, it's like going to the gym. Like some of the stuff is not going to come natural to you right away. And yet if you're willing to push it, you'll have success. All right. So, that, so that's getting the appointment. Now you're on the appointment. Now this is where I have to close my eyes because it gets so scary. Um, who here actually pre-qualifies appointments when they set them? Oh, you're smart. Oh, she's smart too. Okay, all right. So why do you think I'm cringing and that I want you to pre-qualify? Like truly, like why do you, like, why would you pre-qualify an appointment? Saves time. Saves time. time. What's that time? Sure you know, waste the time. Okay. Make sure they're serious. Make sure they're serious. Not embarrassed with the seller. Not embarrassed the seller. Prepared. Okay. You can't get more prepared to sell the seller. What's that? Be prepared. Be prepared. So can you ask them the questions, kind of interrupt the questions to what you need to find out to make sure you let me Oh well, yeah. So so play with me. Okay, so we set an appointment. So you know, Rebecca, I'm so excited about meeting with you and your husband this Saturday. And I just you have two minutes more for me because I just got a few questions so I can be best prepared. Sure. Okay, great. So first of all, so I know so your husband will be there. You've already said that. Um, I, I am curious though, is there anything that you think might come up and that's our appointment up, or do you think we're solid for Saturday? There's no football on this week, I don't think. So I think we're good. Okay, great, great, great. It's just important to me because because I'm going to completely so that Saturday at four, I'm going to completely clear my calendar. So if anybody else wants to meet with me, I'm going to tell them no because we're meeting. So that's great to know. Um, other than you and your husband, are there any other decision makers? Anybody else involved? Okay, that's what I thought. That's great. Tell me a little bit about your house, other than I already, you know, I know it's a three bedroom, two and a half bath. I know the square footage. Tell me a little bit more about your house. Um, well, we have, we call it the red room. 
So it's um, all right. <laughs> And we like to go on there with candles and <laughs> 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 um, I mean, other than all the animals and the animal hair, um, it's pretty well updated. All right. We had it updated in the 90s. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you laugh, and, you, and this is probably not how it goes. And yet, if you know it hasn't been touched since the 90s, you have some important information going in on value. Um, you also, when you ask, tell me about your house, they are going to tell you their communication style. You'll know real quick their ID, if they give you all sorts of, like, you, you'll know if you're going to need to go in and be quick or if you're going to need to slow yourself down. Or if you're on the opposite end, you'll know if you need to speed yourself up or be in your natural sense. So that's important. Okay, great. Well, thank you for telling me about the house. It sounds great. Um, do you know where you'll go if you were to sell the house? Do you know where you'd be going? Well, if we were to sell, I think we would probably go to a condo. Um, okay. Those those smaller, all on one floor, not have to do a lot of work and maintenance. Okay. And would you do that? Would you stay local, or would you be moving out of area? Oh, local. Our family. Okay, great. I totally get that. Um, and then, and would you buy the condo, or would you think of renting? Oh, we buy. That's okay. why we'd have to get enough out to take great. cash up and down. No, that's great. So we'll be able to talk about that when we meet as well. Um, are there any specific questions that you or your husband have in regards to this real estate transaction? Um, commission. Okay, so commission's a concern. We'll talk about that when we meet, first thing. Um, anything else that comes to mind? Um, just showings and what that looks like and how we have to be prepared. Okay, great. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, question for you. Are you interviewing other agents? Well, no, because I didn't know my house was worth this much. So um, I mentioned, you know, the sister's cousin, not uncle's brother. Um, yeah, you called me, and she didn't. You know, okay. so right. as of this time now. Great. P.S. When you, if they say yes, this is your reaction. Even though I know it's not your real reaction, because you're like, oh. like this is your reaction. That's awesome. You know what? Really smart on your part. Who are you meeting with? If you ask with a smile, if you ask like you think it's great that they're interviewing, it's totally not great that they're interviewing. And yet if you ask like that, they'll tell you who it is. And then you have a lot of power because that other agent probably didn't ask. Now you can look up their numbers and I promise no matter who you are, either you or your brokerage has better stats. It, it, some of the stats, not all of the stats. I mean, it could be the number one salesperson in town and yet you might have a better days on market. You might have a better list price versus sales price ratio. And you get to go in with that knowledge in case you need to edge them out. So it's an important question to ask. So, okay, great. Well, I really appreciate you sharing all that with me. So again, I will be there Saturday at four. Um, if anything changes, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you a calendar invite. Um, just go ahead and click on that and accept that so we can lock in our appointment. And then I will be there at four. Awesome. Okay, great. When you pre-qualify, first of all, you look more professional. One question I didn't ask, because I don't have my sheet in front of me, is I would also ask timeline. So if everything makes sense, when would you be thinking of moving? Now, if she tells me, oh, we wouldn't do anything for six months, you choose what you do with that. I still go. I always have. And I'll follow up with them. Because if I don't go, somebody else will. And I still want listings in six months. And six months can turn into two or three months really quickly as well. At the same time, if you're someone who tracks numbers, which you should, and I do, if I'm going on a listing appointment and they're not even thinking of moving for six or 12 months or something crazy, I'm not counting it as a listing appointment because I don't want to count that as a strikeout when I know it's not. It's more a strategic move that I still want to get in front of them and build rapport and be able to get the listing down the road. So sometimes, and like some of you said, like you would pre-qualify to not waste time. And there are listing appointments I've not gone on. Like if you tell me, hey, what do you think your house is worth? Or what are you looking to get for your house? And they tell me $700,000 and it's worth two. Even in this market, I know that that's a little bizarre. So maybe I'm not going to go. Like, and those people do exist. And yet more times than not, I'm going to go. I just want to know, how am I preparing for this? Am I really looking at this as an appointment? Am I more looking at this as just a hello and kind of an exchange? So you look more professional, you have all the information you need, they will tell you their objections up front, so you can go in super sharp. Like if you're uncomfortable, because I think other than where am I going to go, commission is the big one. And for the love of all things holy, 
no, it doesn't happen here. Stop discounting. You don't need to. You don't. And to put my money where my mouth is, my team closed 102 listings last year, just the listing side, and the average commission was 3.13. You don't have to discount. And if they tell you that commission's a concern, you can go in not having to discount because you'll be prepared to, I, to both show a lot of value so that because price is only really an issue in the absence of value. And if they still have the concern, you've got a number of things you can say to get them thinking differently and still get them to sign the contract. So, all right, so do that. Now, so you're going to pre-qualify. You're going to, this is not really a role play thing. I strongly suggest that you send a pre-list package and you would tell them that when you were pre-qualifying. I'm going to send you over my pre-list package. You can send it in person. You can send it via email. I do email. It just is what it is, whatever you prefer. The pre-list package is your opportunity to make it about you. Because if you take the, too much time making it about you and what you do and how great you are at the listing appointment, it doesn't relate. It doesn't, it doesn't go well with the seller because they want it to be about them. Okay, so it's your opportunity to make it about you. It's your opportunity to include any homework. Like, do you have intake sheets that you want them to fill out? Do you have disclosures that you want them to fill out? So this is why we pre-qualify and send a pre-list package. And then you want to confirm every appointment. Here's how you don't waste time. So those of you that said it, you call the night before or the morning of, depending on the time of the appointment, and you just say, you know, hey, it's Hudson with Keller Williams. And I just, I wanted to remind you of our meeting tomorrow at four. I'm so excited and I'll see you then. And you get off the phone as quickly as possible because you don't want them to tell you, oh, I don't know. Like if they really have a reason that they're not going to be there, they'll speak up. And I would strongly assumptively confirm and not like, hey, I just wanted to check and see if it's still okay. Because that's planting doubt in them, whether you mean it to be or not. So you're going to assumptively confirm the appointment. And I do like to remind them at every corner, <laughs> like, you know, I'm going to be there tomorrow and I have completely cleared my calendar for you. So I, I don't have any other clients on the book because I want them to feel bad if they're going to cancel on me. I totally do. I have no problem employing. So, so that would be that. So does anybody have any questions about pre qual Because none of this is really role-play-ish. And yet, the pre-qualifying conversation or any kind of living beliefs around it. Yes, sir. Um, I, and I think um, often our goal and all of our coaching, we also motivation. So yes. Other than the money, is there any other reason we're moving? Absolutely. Because sometimes we find that it's like, oh, I hate that neighbor. And then you go, oh, I have a neighbor problem. Well, you also, you can also find out that it's not the money, you know, and then, you know, you've got an easier conversation to be had as well. So absolutely. Yeah. Like what's your motivation for selling or, and you can ask it different ways. Hey, so we're meeting about selling your house. Tell me more about why we're meeting. Like, wh why are you considering this right now? So that is a great addition for sure. Yeah. And you should have, so, so here's how this becomes foolproof and your questions might be different than their, like, it's fine. I would have a pre-qualification sheet. I should have brought mine and I didn't. So here I'm being human. Like, because then you'll ask all the questions without forgetting anything. Because once you've asked them, then it gets weird if you gotta go back to them. So like whatever you ask on that pre-qual is what you're asking. So that's a great addition. Anybody else? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. I've been um, farming an area. Okay. So I made some calls around the neighborhood. And the other day I spoke with this homeowner. And he asked me that I give him like his home value over the phone. So now I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking I'll just give him a range, try to get the appointment. When I asked for the appointment, he said, can you just tell me over the phone? But now I'm thinking, should I be emailing him a CMA before I get the appointment or just go for the appointment? So this is, it's a weird one to answer because I'm encouraging you guys to reach out and give them the CMA. And yet this guy reached out to you. So I would go for the appointment. Well, I and called I, him. You called him, okay. Yeah. Okay. I was sending postcards and I started like just making real calls around the neighbor. So I, and I said to him, well, are you aware that your neighbor's home just came on the market at $650,000? Was like, six fifty. Okay. So specific to the question, what he said, because what, what did you say? He said, he said, um, can you so just tell me, you just tell me your phone? Can you just yeah, tell me your phone? Can you tell me what my house will sell on the phone? Do you have to come over? He said to me. You know, and I, so, you know what? I could give you a range, and yet I'd really love to give you a more specific value. 
So with and, and no expectations at all, like, could I just come over for five to 10 minutes? Nothing. I'll come with the information. And yet, if I can see your house, I can give you a really solid idea. And they still might say no. And if you can't, here's the thing. If you can't get the appointment, okay, then I would send it or I would tell them on the phone and then I would follow up. Like, I wouldn't not do it. I just, I would always suggest going for the appointment at all costs. And if you get to the point where they're going to hang up on you, you like, okay, then you give them the information and then you follow up and hope that you get something down the road. Um, I would go for the appointment. And again, that specific to that objection, like, can't you just tell me, do you have to come over? Well, yes, I can. And yet I'd really like to provide you more value by seeing the house first and telling you exactly what it's worth. And a lot of people will respond to that and he might not. And that's okay. And yet that's what I would say to it. Cool. Okay. And yes. Forms. So we have some agents that are like, no forms and others are written. What's your experience and, and what are your, what are you finding works for you? Okay, so for, oh, okay. What, what, like, I mean, like, are we sending? The pre, uh, the pre list package gets disclosures. Yeah. Um, because I find it sublimely painful to sit there while they fill out and ask a thousand questions about yeah. their seller's so disclosure. We bring them and go, this is your homework. And then try to collect it later. Well, and you can do that as well. I, and and uh, because they're not always going to fill it out. I always send it though. I send that and then we have like, we create it as a team. Like, we have a one page kind of like, what is the age of the roof? What are the age of the AC? Like, yeah. so we have that that we ask for them to fill out as well. And here, here's the thing, and I, you know this if you're doing this at all, like if you get there and they filled out the paperwork, they want to list with you. And you need to cut that appointment real short and just say, do you have any questions before we go through the paperwork? Because they've already decided. And so you could go through your whole dog and pony show and yet you might say something they don't like and now you've talked yourself out of the listing. Um, so yeah, and then I, I'm of the mindset, and I've always been this way, I bring paperwork no matter what. Even if I say, hey, this is just the, like, I've got paperwork in my bag. Yeah. Because if it, because we've all had it where it turns into a listing appointment real quick. So I want them to sign. And I would encourage the room, like, because I'm seeing this more and more, and I think maybe it's just because we're all so busy. Plus, we have a lot of newer agents who just were thrown into the fire with this market, maybe haven't gotten super trained. Like, Always get the signature when they're ready to give you a signature. I'm seeing so many and like smart agents that are like, well, I'll send it to you tonight or I'll come back in a week. Like, whoa, no, what are you doing? You sign it right then. First of all, why are you creating extra work for yourself? Second of all, the minute you leave, every minute until you send it, they have time to think. We don't want them to think. We want them to sign because once they sign, they're committed and they have to have a really big thought to break that. Everything went through listing appointment, listing agreement. You're sending it. I mean, for the yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I send the. I don't. Uh, so I don't send like affiliated business stuff because sometimes that looks weird. I'd rather explain that property disclosure, HOA or condo disclosure. Um, if there's a CDD, I would send that. Um, I send the, the intake sheet that we want. The, the stuff that's like more tedious and time consuming. A one page affiliated disclosure we can sign in a second. And yet, rather than them seeing a very legalese document being like, I could just say, here's a list of the companies that our office is partnered with. Um, you don't have to use them. This is just to inform you of who they are. That's, so that's as much as I explain it, and they'll sign it every time. And then I don't get any weird questions or trepidation. So I love it. That's great. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. If you've never had a listing before, you're going to buyer's agent. So you got to get one somehow. First interview with somebody. Okay. They don't know you've never had a listing before. Right. Is the first thing that you need to really drill into your brain. Uh -huh. They don't know that. Yeah. Just like if you're a new agent, they don't know if you're the first buyer or seller consult. Like, so we got to get over that. They don't know. They only know you're new if you go in there with your knees knocking. Like, so you've got to find confidence and go in there. So what specifically is your question then? So you've never had one before. Well, I mean, they might ask, so what have you done to your clients in the past when you've sold homes? They won't give answers that fit with the brokerage and the truth is not nothing is always nothing is nothing is that finite right if you go in here confidence and passion will always win so if you go in confident and excited about getting the job and serving your people those questions don't really come up and in fact you should have in your listing presentation what you're going to do for them and then they don't need to ask what you've done for other people because you've already told them what you're doing so that speaks to having a dedicated listing presentation, which I think is on the next slide, like, and not just winging it, like I know most of us are doing, like it's having something you can follow. 
So don't get hung up on that. Go in confident, go in passionate about who you are and what you do and that you intend to help them. And that stuff really is very lowly, very unlikely to come up. And if it does, like if somehow it outs that you are new or that or that it's your first time taking a look, like so for you specifically, so you're not new, you just you've been a buyer's agent. I've been I'm, I'm six months old in real estate. Okay, that is in this market, you've been in it for 20 years. So <laughs> so if, if for some reason they know it's your first listing, then great, you know what? Spin it. If you're quick on your feet, you can spin it. You know what? It, it is my first listing. And boy, first of all, I have had such great training. And second of all, I don't have any other sellers to distract me right now. You're going to get so much more attention from me than you would get from a busier agent. So we're going to have a great time. What other questions do you have? And then, and then you move on. How about if um, I've been helping so many buyers that I really see what sellers are looking for? That's another smart thing. Yeah. You know what? My, my time is a buyer specialist and I have been so busy with it and dedicated to it. Like I know everything that matters to a buyer. So I can help you make sure that you get every bit of top dollar. That's what I'm saying. You can always spin it. And yet if you go in with enough confidence, the question won't come up. I, nobody really ever asked me if I was good. Like they ask you if you're like, oh, dude, like, or oh, I, I got to get, like, if you go in with no knowledge and no, like, chutzpah, they're going to know. Otherwise, you're good. So don't, don't get too hung up. All right. So you've got the appointment. Now you have to go, like, be good at the appointment and also close at the appointment because we like signatures up in here. So this is where, so this is probably like the most, I'm not going to go through an entire listing appointment because there's no way we'd be done. Um, and so I'm going to give you like the things that matter. Okay, so you show up, first of all, get ready for your listing appointment. Like really get ready. Like, are you checking emails right before you're going in? Are you like listening to depressing music or music that lifts you up? Are you listening to a podcast that's inspirational? We all, look, I don't care if you're a music lover or not. Everybody has like four or five songs that'll get them going. That's what you should be listening to on your way there. Are you dressed in a, whatever your level of professional is, because I'm not here to tell you everybody needs to be in a suit, tie, jeans, t-shirt. Like, are you dressed where you feel confident and are you properly put together? Are you avoiding distractions and any negative news right before you roll in? There's nothing worse than getting a can we talk text two minutes before you're going. Like, so <laughs> ignore your technology. And you're going to get there and you're always going to be on time because if you are 30 seconds late for some people, they will already judge you. So get there early rather than at the last minute. And you're going to not, and this sounds rudimentary, but like the first impression matters so, so much. So you're going to knock on the door. And then if the door is here, I'm going to knock and step back because when Rebecca answers the door, I don't need to be in her face even before COVID. That was weird. And now it's extra weird. So make sure that you step back, especially not to, like, especially if you are a male, like don't be threatening. You don't know who's about to open the door. If it's some little kid and you, you terrify them, you're not going to let them. All right. So you're going to come back. You're going to step back. They're going to answer the door. And you're going to, again, I mean, in this market, it's at this day and age, I'm kind of like, oh, do, are you a handshaker? Like, it's fine. And if they're not, you'll give them a fist bump or, or they'll tell you nothing. And it's fine. And yet at least make sure that they don't think you don't know how to properly introduce yourself because that is way weird. So you're going to introduce yourself however you would. You're going to ask if you can come in and they already haven't said it. They've opened the door. I know that might sound weird and yet you're showing respect. This is their home. You're going to ask if you should take your shoes off. I don't care if you don't want to take your shoes off and the floor is gross. You're going to ask <laughs> because there are people you will lose with right away because you didn't ask that question. And I've been there. So everything I tell you is from experience. All right. And they're going to say whatever. And then you're going to go in. If they offer you something to drink, you take it. Like, not if it's a cocktail, that's probably not smart. <laughs> and yet, if they, if they offer you water, I don't care if you just drink a gallon, you take the water. Because again, when you say no to somebody, it's, it sets a tone. All right, so you're going to take whatever you can get. And you're going to start with the tour. And I am a bold coach, and I grew up on Diana Kokoska bolds. So don't ever tell her I said this. They take you on the tour. You don't go on the tour alone. That tour is the time where you should build your rapport. Because if you're doing it at the kitchen table when you're looking to get a signature, like we have to be careful not to become best friends with the clients. We do that after the transaction. It, and, and I want to go back, actually, if you're meeting with someone from your sphere, I, I have a caveat to the saying that there's never a second chance for a first impression. 
because there is, because when you're friends with someone and you're going to go meet them for the first time on a professional level, you're making a second first impression or you're not. And it's not good if you're not. So you're still going to be as professional. You're still going to pre-qualify people who you're close to. It doesn't matter. It just sets you apart and they know you're a professional. And honestly, when you know them well, you need to be double prepared because it's always trouble. All right. So you're going to let them tour the house with you. And then you're going to ask to sit at the kitchen table. You're going to sit where you can see all of the decision makers. Like you don't all want to sit on one side of the table. It's weird. So make, I mean, it sounds silly. And yet I, I watch you people. Like, so you got to make sure that you're in a position where you can have a professional conversation. You're going to keep mirror and matching um, in mind. So if they sit at the table kind of like this, you're going to do that. If they're lean back, you're going to lean back. You don't need to literally mimic their moves and yet be like them so they can like you. So you're going to keep that in mind. And I'm going to strongly suggest that if you don't have a listing presentation that you follow, not something that lives in here, I mean literally something that's on paper or a screen, that you have one. I'm not here to tell you what it is because that's not my job. This is your business. You should have a system so that when you have an off day, because even the top agents in this company have off days, so that you don't miss out on your opportunity. And when you have a system that you follow, you're able to actively listen to people and hear exactly how you win with them rather than be like, oh, what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next. And in that vein, I'm going to tell you, this is not a command class and technology in general makes my head pop off most days. The listing presentation and command is phenomenal. And if there's things you don't like, take it out. That's why it's editable. If you need a listing presentation and you don't want to recreate the wheel because it's not good to recreate the wheel, go there. And the reason it's good is because it makes it all about them. And it tells you what you need to say without looking like an awkward script that they can see. Because everything is pretty and there's just little questions and bullet points. So you can be following along and saying what's there and they're not going to be like, why is he reading off the page? So you're going to ask questions like, well, you know what, Rebecca, I'm so glad that you had me into your home today and, and we're going to have a great time this afternoon. The, the first thing I want to talk about is how do we make sure that this is the best real estate transaction that you could possibly imagine? How do we make this just a 10 out of 10? Um, just communicate, communication, keep me informed on what's going on and feedback. Okay, so I'm hearing that communication is super important to you and you want feedback a lot. So that's something that we can do for you. And, and tell me, why is that important to you? Well, the last time we um, put our house in the market with a realtor, we never heard from them. Ooh, okay. Well, I, I can understand why you'd be a little gun shy because of that, and it won't happen with me. I'm, I'm honestly pretty A-type about communication. So if anything, you might tell me to dial it back. So we'll be good there. If there was one other thing that I could do to make sure that it was just the best thing ever for you, What's the one other thing that I can provide you? Um, it has the best terms. Okay, best terms. All right. And that's important. I'm, I'm glad that you said that in this market because there's this tendency to only think about price and price is important. And yet, if I get you a great price and it's never going to close, you, you got enough. So I'm glad and I will gladly negotiate the best terms and make sure that that's what we do for you. So. And I don't care if you say what I just said, ask them questions that are about them. And then you would go through your marketing plan. And again, I'm not like, I'm not gonna tell you what your marketing plan is. I will tell you, don't overcomplicate things. The average consumer doesn't realize that just by you putting the listing in your MLS that it's on 4,000 websites. So explain to them that you put their listing on 4,000 websites. Like, let them know what you do. Talk about professional photography. Talk about why your photography is different than the competition's photography. Talk about any, you do mailers. Talk, like, tell them what you're going to do without any judgment on you're not doing enough or you're doing too much. Just tell them because most agents don't even do that. All right, so you're going to talk about your marketing plan. You're going to go into the value of the house. I will tell you right now, my, my favorite way to do this is like, it's, I don't know what I would call it, the box method. It's something I learned from John Prescott. And it would be that you would have, because we need to keep it simple for people. They get confused real easily. Realtors aren't the only squirrels out there. So you're going to have three, maybe four at best, really good comps. And when I say good comps, the ones that are at, like the ones they couldn't argue with, like it is your floor plan or it is within 50 square feet and it's got the same bedrooms and bathrooms and a pool. Like you want apples to apples properties and you're going to go in with that. 
and you're going to go over the comps with them and you're going to show them as you're doing like so you know this is this and it's got three bedrooms just like yours and it's got two and a half baths just like yours and then look it's actually the same it's the whatever floor plan just like yours and, and you're going to point all this out to them and, and it's sold for whatever it's sold for five hundred thousand and you know comp B here you know this is the same thing you're going to it'll sound it'll feel weird and repetitious and yet they need to be very clear that you're giving them accurate comps and this sold for 525 and this one sold for 530 so so based off these and this this is where you would have like a literal just piece of paper i know that's weird if you have a remarkable i guess you could use that like you need to write like okay so you've got the i'll do it right here is there do we have a marker perfect all right so you've got so you've got you know number one here which is at 525 and then you've got this one and i'm making up different numbers it doesn't matter and then you've got the other one that's sold at 500. So, so based off what you see here, where do you believe we should price your house? And you're gonna let them answer. And I have a caveat a minute. You're gonna let them answer. And they're gonna tell you more than likely something in here. And if they don't, so, okay, you, you want 550. Um, you don't really open for 550. But, you know, Rebecca, I, I can understand that it's just that I just don't see it. So tell me, where are you coming up with that? Well, I think we have um nicer amenities, you know, we have print paint, and we just got a new light fixture in the dining room. No, and, and you know, the light fixture is great, and your paint is beautiful. And yet, if you'll notice, the actually the 510 and the 525 both have fresh paint and pretty nice modern light fixtures. So again, your house is amazing, and yet. What about 530? Well, this is where my caveat comes in. In this market, take a listing. <laughs> like, but truly, and yet, those of you that are, have done this long enough to know, will you get a better result if the listing's not overpriced? Yes. You know, well, you get 30 offers versus 15, whatever it is, like, you'll get a better result. And so my point is, Go for the best price possible and do not, unless it's literally insane, you take the listing. All right. The reason, the point of this and this, whatever, the reason you put this here, the, I literally, there was a reason I drew the box. And this will sound silly, and yet it's proven by a lot of high producing agents. Those people cannot think outside the box. There is a reason we put them in a literal box. It does something to the mind. And just think if you like, I know it sounds kind of cheeky, and yet not many people are like us and go out and earn a living every day without any guarantee. Most people literally live in a box and cannot think outside of it. That is the reason for that. So that's how I like to do pricing because I want to keep it simple. I don't want to leave a ton of room for interpretation. And then when you when you've gone over everything and you've talked about price, this is how I'll come right to you. This is how I close. And this is to me, not just because I think I'm great, I do. I, this to me is the best way to do it. Great. Well, you know what? And then I just pulled the paperwork out. And this is also why I like tangible paper, even in 2022. So let's go over the paperwork. And then they'll either go, whoa, 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 whoa. Now I have questions. And you'll say, okay, well, what questions can I answer for you? And you'll go through them. Or they won't. And if you did a good job, they probably won't and you'll just start going through it now you might get to the commission section and they might have a question or an objection and you would deal with that do you know what i'm saying though like i you don't have to leave room hey would you like to look at the paperwork no that's your next step you go into the paperwork you don't allow them to think unless something really big comes up yes Anya. so do you just bring mls sheets of the three comps, or four comps. For the comps, yes. I and I and only because I have a little bit of old school stuck in me. I mean, you could insert it into your. It could be part of the editable listing presentation. Again, I know I'm going to write this down on paper, so I like the comps to be. I like to be able to take them and show them, and I feel like that's easier. Most of my stuff is on a screen. There's just something about paper for certain things. So what about adjustments? So that one down the street, it's a little smaller. It's a little bigger. Do you make adjustments? Or do you I don't, make only because I feel like I'm not an appraiser and we don't need to go that for In my experience, those people aren't going to be that detailed anyways, especially if you line it up right. And if you pick comps. That, now, once in a while, we might have a listing where the comps just aren't that great, right? And yet, for most of the time, we can find really close comps. 
where, okay, we can adjust for paint or light, or they add it on a bathroom or stuff like that. And yet at the same time, if you've got three apples to apples properties, you're less likely, in my experience, you're less likely to get argument on it. So that, that's why I do it that way. I don't, I mean, if you adjust this, none of what I'm saying is like law or right or wrong. This is just what, this is what I have done. And this is the way I train my team. And this is things I talk about in bold and all the things. I like to keep it really simple for people. So, because I, there's things are over my head really easy. Yes, ma'am. You said three cups. I, I only do actors. You don't need to um, send in. So, I mean, you well, I, you, sorry. Oh, we're such in a weird market. I, I always veer towards solds because that's real. In this market, if there is an active listing, it's probably good to at least mention it to them. And yet this market's not that different from others in that not everything sells for over list price. Like you only have to look at your, I mean, in almost any market, yours is probably the same because Tampa's not that different. Like our average sales price versus list price is about a hundred. So average is full price, not like, you don't know what they're going to sell for. So I, and that's how, I mean, that's kind of how I explain it to sellers. Like we really want to focus on fact. This is fact. And the great news about this market is that if 525 is lower than market value, we'll be fine because the market will carry it. I think it's literally impossible to underprice a listing right now. It is very possible to overprice one. So that's what I would say about that. Yes. In the, regarding the box, two nice things. In one past market, you could write the three prices, and oftentimes they would circle the middle one. Yeah. They would go after the middle price, which would be in the middle. And then another nice thing about the box is if they are way up there, or way off, you show them what your price is, and eventually you do have to come back down to it. You know, when you talk about that price, you remember that, and visually it sticks in their head. So, well, that's a big expectation setter with me for a long time. So, I actually have, I have that they signed to it that. Now, of course, in this market, it's almost laughable to say out loud. If we've gone three weeks without an offer, that's so funny. When that, when we, if we've gone three weeks without an offer, then you're, and I don't ever make them agree to an actual reduction. The agreement is that they will be open to conversation. And yet what that's done is back when we needed price reductions, like half of the time they came to me before I could get to them. Hey, it's, if they were detailed people, hey, it's, it's been three weeks. So what do we need to reduce it to? And I'm like, oh, I love you. And then the rest of the people at least weren't mad at me when I reached out to them because we had set the expectations. So I think that's a great point as well. Um, all right, I'm gonna do, we're gonna have running out of time, which is because you guys are interacting and I really like that about you. Let me, let me talk real quick about the promise because I think that's important. And I think that, uh, so the promise was, Mike Kick started it, he's in North or South Dakota, I can't remember. And then Tony Baroni, who's just up the road, um, kind of morphed it a little bit. And this is my version, and this is something else you would do. And actually, you really could set it up. This is something you could include. You could come up with verbiage and have it in your pre-list if you wanted. And you could ask if they've read the promise. And you don't have to do that. And yet, in the towards the beginning of the appointment, probably right before you would start asking questions, this is how I would do it. You know, one of the things that's really important to me is that I go over our team's promise. Or if you don't have a team, don't get hung up on that over my promise. And so could I go over our promise with you? They'll say yes every time. Okay, great. Well, you know, Rebecca, here's our promise to you is that we are going to make sure that you have the absolute best real estate experience that you possibly could. Like just a 10 out of 10, you'll be so happy with us. And, and when we deliver on that promise and you are genuinely happy at the end of the transaction, we'd like to ask for two small things in return. Would that be all right? Sure. Right, and literally everyone will say yes, just so you know, so don't get hung up on this. Great, well, one of the things that I'd like to ask for is that you give us a five-star review because our business is so dependent on client reviews, just like every business is nowadays. And so as long as everything is great, will you give us a five-star review at the end of this transaction? Absolutely. Okay, great, well, I'm gonna appreciate that so much. And, and the other thing that we would ask is that you're gonna come across other people with real estate needs especially because you're in the middle of a real estate transaction. So between now and the time that we close on your home, I'm going to ask that you give us one referral that we can speak to, whether they're looking to sell their home, buy a home, invest in real estate, even if they just need to refi. Now, I know you don't really want refi, and yet now you're, you're training them that they should just think of you when they think of real estate with no judgment. Um, so I'm going to ask that you give us one of those referrals by closing. Do you think that would be okay? They'll say yes, right? 
Great. And, and the last thing I want to do, Rebecca, is I, I just want to make sure that I'm clear on what the promise isn't. And, and what the promise isn't is that not everything's going to be perfect. Like, this market is crazy and real estate in general is crazy. And we will have moments where things might get tense. And yet my promise to you is that we are going to get you through those with the least amount of stress. And, and really, if I have anything to do with it, I don't even want you to know about the problem until it's been handled. So would that be okay? Right. Because the end of this is, or that's not the end, whatever. We're, I'm riffing a little here. The, you want to train these people from the start that referrals matter. Because just like your vendors, they don't know if you don't ask. You've got to train them. And when you have that conversation, now, first of all, that conversation allows you to ask for feedback throughout. Hey, I'm just checking in, or you give them the update about the appraisal, or this, that, the other. And, and wow, I've got you on the phone. How are we doing on the promise? And you take the feedback, and you take it without judgment. If you get constructive criticism, you own it, you accept it, and you do something about it if there's merit to it. And if there's not merit to it, you still accept it because you want them to feel right. And yet either way, you get to touch base. If you get to the end of the transaction and they haven't given you a referral, well, now you have a great opportunity to bring it back up. And without judgment, just say like, hey, you know, I, I saw that we haven't gotten a referral from you. And have you been happy? Is everything great? Did we fulfill our promise? They'll say yes, unless you're really jacked up. And you'll say, great. Well, and you've been so busy. And yet, do you think if we extended that for like a month or two, like, could you find somebody for us? And they'll say yes. And then you'll get a referral. And then you're training them. And then when you don't lose touch with them, because it doesn't have to be awkward if you just don't do it, then it's very easy to check on them and how's the house going. And you know what? Thank you for that referral. And we had such a great time with John and Joe Fire. And I just, I would love to know, we had fun with them and we love working with you. Do, is there anybody else in your friends and family that we could help with real estate? It doesn't ever have to feel weird if you've trained them from the beginning. And we don't always do that. So we're like literally tight on time. So we skip some stuff. So rather than cover things that might not matter to the people in the room, what I'd love to do is ask if there's anything. Actually, let's go where I feel like most people would want to go. Does anybody have an objection that comes up? And this is not where you come up with one that's funny, like a real objection that you get on a regular basis that you'd like to hear an objection handler for or a response for because objection handler is actually like a really negative term nobody wants to be handled so you're more addressing situations anybody nobody has objections i had one today well it was um i was calling a past client then he's talking about how there was a guy in the neighborhood that can that's just uh it's like an offers uh type of a company came through the neighborhood okay they still wants to list with us but he was seriously considering it. So I guess where am I going with that? Um, if, if they were going to do it, I, I, would, I, I would just simply like, well, why don't we talk first before you make that decision? If you want to do that to be okay, but why don't we talk first? Well, I would. Or you, you have that ability. Sorry. Well, that's, so that's what I'm saying. So yeah. you, you do. You have to. Do. So okay. if, if you're looking to sell the home without having to have showings, I totally understand the convenience factor there. We have the same program and we're happy to get you. because. Because what that is, Mr. Seller, is, is that's going to be an investor offer. That's not going to be an occupied person. So, so the offer is going to be a little bit lower than market. And yet we can do that same thing for you and still be there to represent you through the transaction and make sure your best interests are there. And, and if you don't like that offer, then we can still look at listing your home traditionally and we'll still only need two or three days of showing. So it won't be that bad. So I really think like I, I've, I've met with agents that are in areas where like Keller offers doesn't exist or maybe none of them exist, right? Like you could just create your own. Guess what? If the offer is 75 or 80% of market value, I promise you have someone in your database, it might even be another realtor that will go buy the house. Like, so you can still come up with your own ad. Like before we got Keller offers up in Tampa, um, my good friends, the, some of you probably know, the Rutherfords, the Amber Rutherford's bold coach as well. Like they just created their own. They, I forget what they called it, Rutherford. Like they created their own deal. And most of the people don't want the investor price anyways, they want full price. And if they do, great. Okay, well, give me a couple hours, go make a few, like you'd find somebody that wanted the house under market, especially in this market. So, um, but that's great. Yeah, I think you just, yeah, again, you just get in front of them. We can offer that too. Because pretty much anything that an online system can do, we can do. You want more convenience? Here's how we do that. Like you can do that. So that's great. What else? Yes. Um, I personally know three other 
you know, agents that have just used that. It's, it's totally great. And yet, ha have you signed with any of them yet? No. Okay, well, great. I And I know that you, sounds like you're going to use one of them. And yet, I don't really think we can ever have too much information. I would really love to meet with you and just give you another opinion. Would that be all right? With absolutely no obligation. And then kind of a caveat to that, or like an off to the side of that is if you have, um, like, let's say you've got, it's, oh, my cousin's got their license. Like, there's a number of directions you can go with that. Well, you know, have you worked with family before? Sometimes that can be a little tricky, you know, or, and with no judgment, Mr. Seller, do you feel like your cousin is the best person to get the job done? Or do you feel like it's me? And, and they might not say you, and yet, if they're still talking to it's probably you um so that's a direction to go and wh when it comes to that they know other agents and if it's now if there's three you're not going to do three like if there's a lot of times if there's that one agent that they really feel obligated to if i can't get around it and they still want to work with me i'll pay that agent a referral fee all day long to get 75 percent of publicity so that's another direction you could go i wouldn't I leave with it the guy that told me he had a line to Cleveland. Yeah, well, he sounds horrible, and maybe we just need to go to the next person. Yeah, so I because that's the other thing. See, here's the other thing I don't want you to give up easy, and I also don't. This is what I see realtors do because, like, I feel like I watch all of you all the time because of the nature of what I do for a living. Like, y'all get so stuck on the one person that wasn't nice or the one person that's giving you a job. I'm not, I'm not saying you I'm, in general, though, I do see it. Oh, I just, oh, I've been working with this buyer for six months. Well, like, have you found any new buyers? Have you gone to get a listing? Like, <laughs> So like, just be careful of that trap. I'm not okay. saying it's you, yeah. it just brings up the point. Yes. This one's maybe for not classroom setting. Um, or maybe, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I, and maybe it's not really with this stuff, but um, I was approached a uh, week and a half ago by someone, an acquaintance. They currently have their home listed with another agent. They are so unhappy with that agent. They wish they could get out of that contract. How much can I say? Ooh, I'm not the right person to ask, and I'm going to answer anyways because I'm just like that. <laughs> I believe that you would be safe. First of all, they reached out to you, so you're already safe, and it's someone in your sphere, so it's already safe. I wouldn't badmouth the agent. That'll get you in trouble. I, I, I'm sorry you're unhappy. I can totally understand that. I would love to work with you if that was able, and it's not unless you can get out of the contract. And I would advise them to probably look. I mean, first of all, they could look at the contract. <laughs> Some, I mean. I put an easy exit in my contract. I have no problem with that. I don't want to be stuck in a transaction with somebody who's miserable because then I'm miserable. I've never had a problem saying you can have your listing back. I, that's just me. And it doesn't happen very often because most of the time they are happy. Um, so I would look at the contract. If the contract is cancelable, then all they need to do is go do that. And then you can work with them. Now, I mean, there's definitely a tread lightly there. And you might want to ask your broker questions. And yet at the same time, you're at least in the clear to speak to them because they're in your sphere and they contacted you first. Can I follow up with them? Can you just care call them? I mean, like, I feel like there's a, there's a fine line. I would be careful. I don't see why they're in your sphere. I don't see why you couldn't call and see, hey, I'm just seeing how it's going. Not, hey, did you fire them yet? They're stupid. <laughs> like, hey, I'm seeing how, like, I think you could check it. And again, if they bring up, they want it canceled, then advise them. We'll look at your contract and check it out. It's only four pages, the actual list, like, right? Like, are, are there any ways for you to get out of it? You And ha, I wouldn't look at it myself because I wouldn't want to advise them. If they can't figure it out, they can always go to the other agent or the broker. It'll be a weird conversation, but who cares? So I would just, I would be careful. And yet I definitely, I mean, you're not a broker either. Like it's not like you can't talk to them. They're in a sphere. And they initiated the con conversation. I, I, think I mean, if they approach us, we can Yeah. Them. And again, I think where you need to be careful is not, not bad mouthing the other agent, even though the other agent might truly be abysmal. And honestly, I don't yeah. personally know the other. Yeah, perfect. So, so then you're you're safe there anyway. So just yeah, no, I would I think you can follow up and just be very careful with the way that you speak. Okay. That's all. So anything else? Okay. Can I just circle back and ask you a question about the? You can circle back wherever you want. Yeah. Circle back. <laughs> um, so we'll move on the uh, gold numbers and uh, so the cost. Yeah, so like, so yeah, like looking for listings for your, I, I mean, they think that's any activity that's going to get you a listing I'm a fan of. Um, if we're going to talk about golden letters, so golden letter is really designed, who here listens to Pivot Shift and even as any, okay, so there's a few of you. 
like we do just laugh at things that repeat themselves sometimes. So like people are constantly saying, I've sent out this many hundred golden letters and I haven't got any results. And every time the question is, well, who are you sending them to? It's always strangers. So the golden letter was designed for you to send to your sphere. Now, it's not like you couldn't send it to strangers and there's people that have riffed off that and yet it's designed to be sent to your sphere. It's essentially, it's similar to the conversation that I shared. It's just in a letter form instead of it's, you know, hey, the market's crazy. I mean, I don't, I forget the exact verbiage. It's essentially the market's crazy. What do you think about selling what's your number? I mean, that that's the short version of it. So you could do that and then be calling behind it. And yet that's the same thing. If you want, if you want to mail first, like if you prefer to do that, the secret sauce is to follow it up with a call or a pot buy or something, because the people that are just mailing things, not that there's no success, there's just less success. So you'll always do better when you follow up with actual voice to voice or in person conversation and all things. And I know that COVID even made the extroverts into introverts because we all had to stay home for so long. Like you've got to remember that even you've got to be willing to have conversations. You, you will struggle in this business if you want to do everything from behind the screen. And there's no judgment. That's my natural. And I know that I've got to push myself out of it if I have big goals to hit. So I love it. All right. Well, I have you captive. So I am going to talk about bold real quick. Um, so yeah, I know you're so excited. Uh, so, so bold is coming and I will be the coach. So if you have a miserable time today, it's probably not for you. If you had an okay time today, then it probably is. Um, I bold is business objective, a life by design. I know we have some newer agents in here. It is a seven week course where you, we meet once a day or once a week, excuse me, um, for seven weeks. And it's transformative. It's less of a class and more of a transformational coaching with some learning in it as well as how I would describe it. And, and, and I coach it out of passion. I, I have, a, my team did 60 million last year. I don't need to do this. And I don't say that to sound full of myself. Like I, I just, I don't like our, our, biz, our bills are covered. I, I coach bold because bold changed my life. And here's the shortest version so that I don't make this all about me. And yet this is why I coach it. I, I, I started my business in Southern California. I was there for eight years. You can make a lot of money there without a pulse because the houses are very expensive. I'm not sure if you're aware. And so I did that. I barely did have a pulse back then. I was not the same person. And then I moved to Southwest Florida to Fort Myers originally in 2014. And after eight months, I had sold exactly zero houses. And so I went to Bold. It was October of 2014. And I was like, well, it's this or getting a job. So I'll do this. And I put it on a credit card because I was broke and took that class. And I found, I think it was, I think I had 11 pieces of business and you know, I closed seven by the end of the year. That, now that sounds like nothing. And then that literally saved me from getting out of the business. That was a lot when you'd had zero that year. Um, anyway, so I, I believe that success leaves clues, right? I had a great experience. I had great growth and not just within my business. I was, I moved here for a, long distance relationship turned out to be very, very not good. Um, and so I was also miserable at the time and I was happier because it was such a positive environment. We were focusing on mindset and strength and not like victim and lack. And so I decided to keep going. And so within four and a half years, I went 15 times, not that dumb, just realized that it worked well. So I kept going back. Uh, my third year in the business in Florida, I closed over a hundred homes and I had in eight years in California, never sold more than 25. So Again, not bragging, that's just that's what it did for me because I kept going back and I kept myself in an environment of growth and production and positivity, to be quite frank. Um, and then I say four and a half years because the 15th bold, I could no longer really go as a student anymore because that is the bold where I became a bold coach. And I became a bold coach because my friend Amber Rutherford that I mentioned to you challenged me in a room of 100 people and was like, you should be teaching this. Why are you sitting in the seats? And so I applied and became a coach. I literally, within five years, I went from zero production to millionaire real estate agent. And I also got out of a very nasty relationship. I am married with six children. Do the math on the timeline. It's been busy. Um, everything that matters to me in my life, my marriage, my children, um, our wealth. We have investment properties now. I never thought I'd do that. Um, I'm working towards a freedom number. I'm about to invest in a market center. Um, my business, we, we took our business and expanded it. I, I mean, like literally everything that I can think of that matters came from that room. Everything without caveat. 
And so that is why I coach it. So here's here's who Bold is for, to be quite frank. I don't care if you sold no houses or a thousand houses in the past year. If you desire for more in your business, in your wealth, in your health, in your personal relationships, if you desire more anywhere, if you feel you have a gap anywhere, it's the place that you should be. Um, and it will start on Wednesday the 30th. What's the location again? I should know that. BFW. BFW, where is that? Tell them so they know like. BFW. It's not BFW. No, it's not. It's been changed, but it's on. American Legion? Yeah, I think it's American. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a right on the sheet. That it's all. Uh, it's American Legion. Yeah. It's like BFW, but it's not. It's not crazy far for them, right? No. no. Okay, that's what I wanted. No. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, it'll be worth it. Actually, for you, it'll be smart because you'll get pearl parts out of it. Um, it's where you should be. I just I can't tell you enough. And so, as far if you're a numbers person, so it does cost money, like seven hundred ninety nine dollars. And the average person will find 11 and a half pieces of business. I know the half sounds weird. It's an average. Play with me. So that is listings taken, buyer listings taken. That means they signed with you and under contracts. So I don't know what the average commission is in here. It's probably a lot. 10. Cool. So that's 110 plus thousand dollars for 799. Oh, what if you only do half of that because you're less than average? I don't think any of you are still a really, really amazing ROI. And for me, I literally, I'm living a life today that I never even thought I would live. That's the truth. So, um, and I have my good friend here, um, Rebecca's friend and my friend, Janet, who is um, a living testimonial. So she will share real quick. Um, she's taken hold of me twice. She is from Rockford, Illinois. Um, I was gonna say, stand off to the side where I am. It's blinding. Um, and, and so she, she can tell you, Rich just happens to be here on vacation. So I'm making her speak, which is not her favorite thing to do. So be nice to her. You, you, tell, you tell them your yeah, version so, of why it's important yeah, and what it did for you. So my name is Janet Churchill. I'm from Northern Illinois, Southern Wisconsin area actually getting licensed here and I will be at your market center. So you'll be working. Um, I took bold in the fall of 2019 for the very first time. And did you want to? Or I did not want to. You? My team leader pushed me and pushed me because I was having a really bad, bad season in my career. Um, but it was for a good reason that I was having a bad season, but it just was nothing. So I took bold with Hudson um, and the confidence that I got out of it, like I would never be standing here talking to you guys if I, if I hadn't done it. The confidence, the mindset, the growth, and the strategies that I learned during that class, phenomenal. Not only to mention, I ended up with 25 transactions in a, additional transactions, not my regular ones, um, through the, the pandemic. So that all came from, from me making those calls and going to the classes and everything like that. In the Rockford area, the average commission is only $5,000, but it still netted me a GCI of $125,000 that year. Last year- For seven ninety nine. dollars For seven ninety nine, dollars <laughs> right? Making that it, it's crazy. And then um, took it again this past fall. Um, already this quarter, I've already gotten 13 additional transactions from there. I haven't done the math for that. 13 but, times five. Right. It's more than 7.99. Right. <laughs> so anyway, it's so worth it. So how many of you are already signed up for gold? But I, I strongly, strongly encourage you to, because if you're saying no to bold, you are saying no to your future income. And is that fair to your families? Is that fair to your friend, your, uh, your future income? It, it's, it's not. It's, I seriously, strongly, strongly encourage you all to sign up. $7.99 is nothing compared to what you can gain from it. And it isn't just all about the money. I forgot to raise my hand. No, it's about who, well, it's, bold is about who you become. And like you said something important about your confidence level, and, and I can see that in you. And yet I, I wish that I'm so close to where I was that I wish somebody had been in the room. Like the first few bolts that I went to, if I even spoke once in that day, I had to psych myself up and then I would sit down and I'd go to take a sip of water and spill it because I was shaking because I spoke in front of the group. And now I get up in front of 150 people and I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah, I, I did that. That's purposely. growth. Like yeah. that's growth. So it is, it's so much more than just, you will sell more houses. Yay. 
<laughs> it is about a lot more than that. It's about becoming the best version of you and living a life that you're passionate about rather than the one that you just accept. That's what it is. I will never not take a hold again. She said it. I, I can said hold it. To it. I, I even took it's it. recorded. I <laughs> you're on video again. It's your favorite. Well, uh, and, and so she said, raise your hand if you're taking gold. One person raised their hand or already signed up for gold. Raise your hand if your business is exactly where you want it to be. And those are the people that should be in yep. the room Absolutely. because it's life freaking changing. I've I've been coaching Janet since 2018. Well, yeah, well before that and after and. Who she's become, her business, and everything has done. I've seen a change in the rooms of gold and how she carried it on after until the next gold game done, right? Right. So um, it is life changing. And the bonus for you guys that they don't have up there is that you get reimbursed in your first two transactions. So it's only half price. So imagine $125,000 and it only costs you $399. Tell me which one of your spouses, lovers, significant others, parents would say, do not invest three ninety nine to get one hundred twenty five thousand. That is a horrible investment. Well, and here's the the last thing because this it really does sometimes kind of trip me out, and I get it. I've been there. It's like so I, I've worked for Maps, like I, it's a reputable source, right? If I came up to you and said, let's say that it was a different company and yet reputable, he just keep play with me, and I said, look, you invest seven ninety nine today, and two and a half months from now. I'm going to hand you $100,000. You'd all line up and you'd all get your credit card out. You'd call your friend because you needed to borrow half of it. <laughs> She's already right. And I like that about you. Oh, I plan to join me for this. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so I want you to think an opportunity and think about where you truly desire to be by the end of this year and not just where you might end up. So now the question is, who would actually like to attend Bold? Raise your hand and then take your pen out because there's a piece of paper right here and we'll collect it from you. So this, and for the record, I'm not going to go, oh, you're so wonderful. I'm not going to go shopping with your credit card. We will either, if your MC has time, it's great, or we can scan it to my assistant and she will register you and it'll be done and you don't need to think about it. If you are on the fence and you'd like to, so the first step of Bold is free. It is from 9 to 12 on the 30th. And so I would tell you to at least do that. And yet here's the deal. If you know that you have a reason to be there, just sign up for the whole thing now so you can start blocking time. However, if you do come to First Step, if, even if you don't join us, so I had a girl in my current bold in Memphis, and we are going to wrap up. I know we're way over time, and I appreciate you guys being patient. Um, I have a girl in my Memphis bold who did sign up, and yet at First Step, one of the things we do is we, we teach a specific texting technique in order to uh, communicate and gain business, which I know y'all like, because I know you don't want to actually talk to people, like, let's be real. So we teach a texting technique, and there was an agent in there who was a producing agent, and yet not like a mega, um, and she sent, she did the exercise, which is she sent 10 texts out in a specific way, which we teach at Bold, and I won't tell you now, because I want you to come. Um, she took two listings that afternoon, I am not kidding. She sent me the paperwork to prove it because I was like, that seems crazy. She took two listings that afternoon from those 10 texts. And she took a third listing the next week in, through follow-up from 10 text messages. So even if you don't think you're going to do it, whether it's the cost or you can't be there for certain dates, I would encourage you to come get free information like you got today that will help you in your business moving forward. And we're going to have lunch the free first stuff. Yeah, we just added that. We know y'all like free and lunch. And you get a really cool journal and you get some stickers. Yeah, and it's an $800 bracelet. Oh, yeah, the bracelet. It's like that. <laughs> uh, yes, John. Uh, thank you both. Why didn't you get one? Good for you. I mean, I would sign up. We're going to miss three balls. So that's why we're three of them, really? Oh, what a bummer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can understand that. My rule of thumb is always if you can make five out of the seven, that it's worth it. Missing three is it, it, it does oh, seem so. We, have a, we do have an LC member and a team member that on our team that is going to sign up. So That's great. Well, you can take in the paper and get them signed up today. It's going to be great. Sure. Appreciate you guys being here. So, you ought to join. If you could join us for step one, you should just to get the information. So, because um, I think it's probably different from the last, because I know you've been a million times and yet it's, it's been rewritten a number of times since the pandemic. So, it'll be yeah. different stuff. So, any other questions about, well, anything including bold? Mm -hmm. Don't second guess it. If you know this is where you should be, fill out the paperwork and they will collect it. Um, and then I will hang out for a few minutes if you've got questions. I appreciate you guys staying with us a little bit later. And here's my contact information. You may actually use it. I am not like the man behind the curtain. If you have things that were discussed today and you would like to address them, like I'm, I am all yours 100%. All right. Thank you for being here today.
Oh, you're going to sit down in January. 